Last season, it was the Ohio Bobcats and Calvin McRae pulling away from Miami on the way to a Mac East title in Oxford. It's the final home outing for Calvin, and he wants it to be as memorable as the beginning. Today in Athens, a win would be the first over the rival Red Hawks at home since 1999, when Ohio legend Chad Brinker powered the attack for Jim Grove's team. The defense must be stout again against Miami for Ohio to get to 500 on the year. First Frank Solich hopes the home fans will get a chance to celebrate his seniors as they go out with a win against their rivals. Get ready for the Red Hawks and Bobcats right now. Good afternoon and welcome to Athens, Ohio in Peden Stadium on the campus of Ohio University. It's time for the Battle of the Bricks, the Red Hawks and Bobcats. I'm Jason Coma alongside Matt Shepard. Miami comes in this game basically the same place where Ohio was last year on their way to the MAC title game. But that's not to say there's not a lot at stake for the Bobcats in this one. You're right. Miami has already clinched their spot in the championship game next week against Central Michigan. But the Bobcats still playing for a lot. A 500 record. This will be the first time since the mid-90s the Bobcats have gone 500 or better back-to-back. -back, plus beating the Red Hawks, always a big deal. If Ohio does it, this will be the first time they've beaten Miami back-to-back -back since the mid-80s. It's also senior day here at Ohio University. 17 seniors playing their last game for the green and white. Including one special one, Calvin McCormick. Pray more on Calvin and the Bobcats coming up here on the Ohio Bobcats Sports Network. When hot, molten rock, ash, and gases erupt. And it's because hearing is something you can always fake. Tom, what do you think? <laughs> but not for long. Delta, finally a hearing device you'll actually want to wear. Call the number on the screen or visit our website for more information on Delta. Back here at Peden Stadium, Jason Coma along with Matt Shepard. It's senior day for the Ohio Bobcats. 17 seniors playing their final home game, including one special one. Calvin McRae. Well, Calvin McRae has been sensational since he stepped on campus as a freshman. He's already etched his name into record books in just about every category. He'll be able to do more of that today. Two touchdowns, he becomes Ohio's all-time scoring leader. McRae has been explosive up the middle through the tackles, also has had breakaway speed, and Calvin McRae certainly looking to go out with one more big win. And we had a chance to talk to his head coach, Frank Solich, a guy who knows a thing or two about running backs about his star, Calvin McCray. He's been a, an outstanding athlete that um, has shown himself as that really every year he's been here and, and basically every game, and that's very, very difficult to, to do. He's had a great career here, and um, you know we're hoping that he ends it up with, a, with, a, with a, uh, his last football game also being a, a great one. And Calvin McCray has a lot of records that he could continue to break today. We'll do our best to keep you up to date on all of those. But first things first, the kickoff of the Red Hawks and Bobcats coming up next on the Ohio Bobcats Sports Network. Log on to OhioBobcats.com. We are just a few minutes away from kickoff here in Athens, Ohio. A very football-like day. 40 degrees outside and a good day for football as the Bobcats get set to take on the Miami Redhawks. Let's introduce you to the third member of our crew. Matt Barnes is down on the sideline. And as I understand, Matt, you've got a little bit of an injury update for us. Yeah, just a bit. Quarterback Theo Scott, who actually injured his groin during that Temple game. Kind of a nagging injury. He will play, won't start, though. Brad Byer, Brad Byer will start the game. Meanwhile, Taj Henley, linebacker, also injured an ankle during that Temple game. He will also play, probably start as well. Uh, we'll see how both those Bobcats do today in this rivalry that everyone loves the hub. See you. All right, thank you, Matt. And uh, Matt Shepard with me here in the booth. So Brad Bauer getting the start today. Uh, Theo Scott, the groin still lingering a little bit. Brad Bauer is senior. Uh, good, good, good to see him out there in the mix, particularly on senior day. But he definitely doesn't have the dimension of running the football, or not as much as Theo Scott does. Well, Brad Bauer, you think back a year ago, 
This is where he made his mark against Miami. He played a very manageable game, and that's what he's going to have to do today. He talked about the uh, the weather, 40 degrees, a little bit breezy. It's running the football weather, and that's what head coach Frank Solich loves to see. And to that game against Miami last year was a tough season for the, the Red Hawks. They finished uh, with just a couple of wins last season, really turned things around, and they're on their way to the MAC title game to take on Central Michigan. Brad Bauer in that game had probably most the most balanced game of the entire season. Offensive coordinator Tim Alvin has said that he looks back on that season as sort of the benchmark to, to move forward to this season. As we take a look at our university's keys to the game, Brad Bauer is right on the top of the list. Well, he needs to repeat that performance of a year ago. And again, that means not trying to do too much. Manage the game, move the chains, and then number two, get that ball to establish uh, Calvin McRae. And then finally, force Miami not to, to be a one-dimensional team. Now, when Miami throws the ball every down, they're not as good. You can look at the stats. They need to be balanced for Miami to be successful. The Bobcats really want to turn them into a one-dimensional team. Yeah, in six of the wins for Miami, they've had 195 yards rushing per game. So that is certainly going to be a key for the Bobcat defense. And Jimmy Burrow, the defensive coordinator, wanting to key in on that. The Ohio Bobcats did win the toss, and they will defer to the second half. So that'll give us a chance to uh, take a look at the Red Hawk return men. And they've got a lot of speed on this team. Jamal Rogers and Chris Givens. Givens, a kid out of Chillicothe that the Bobcats recruited a, a whole lot but he went to Chillicothe because he's, uh, he's got a brother and a sister. A sister's graduated from there, and his mom went there as well. A uh, big one for the Bobcats uh, either way today as they get ready to tee things off here in the Battle of the Bricks. Michael Bronstein, the outstanding Bobcat kicker. He's another guy that has had a tremendous amount of records in his short time in, a, in an Ohio uniform. We'll talk more about him as we get things underway. Rogers with the return, picks it up up to two. And of course, Coddle only makes it about to the 20-yard line, and that's where we will have a chance to see the Miami offense come out to the field. Well, this is a Miami offense that they have been throwing the ball a lot. They've had to really rely on the quarterback to try and get some things done. A lot of injuries across the running back position. Brandon Murphy, second game of the year. Big-time running back goes out with an injury, and since then it's been almost a revolving door for them. On that front line for Miami, the left tackle, uh, Charlie Norton, really anchors everything. A three-year starter who's played three different positions. A lot of speed with Harris and Woods and Givens from Chillicothe. And Daniel Radabaugh will get things going at quarterback, and he will fire out. And that'll be Harris picking it up, makes a slip, and that's something the Bobcats cannot afford to have happen. Now, Ohio has to be able to come up. They have to be able to make the play at the point of attack as you see a flag down in the first play. Uh, flag coming in a little bit late, but uh, one thing Jimmy Burrow, the defensive coordinator for the Cats, had told us is that his front four, particularly with Landon Cohen and the defensive ends, Hartke and Riley, going to have to watch those screens coming out. Taj Henley will get the start. The senior from Richmond, Virginia, has been hampered by an ankle injury this season a little bit. And in the defensive backfield, the senior, Todd Koenig, playing his last game at home for the green and white. Face mask on the Bobcats, so that'll move things up a bit as we get start to go at the 43 yard line now for the Red Hawks. Route ball likes to do that, move the ball around. He'll move it around to different receivers and instead of having the real strong running game, they'll control the clock, control the possession with the short passes. He's out of the shotgun now, got trips to the far side, will make the give and stuffed. A big hit up front by Connor Riley. Corey Jones getting the carry, so it looks like Matt that uh, Austin Sykes is another running back that uh, it was down a little bit for the Red Hawks, and he, he's going to be hurt with an ankle injury, not playing right away. Corey Jones, freshman out of Florence, Mississippi, was able to get the carry on that one. The Bobcat defense, that's what they want to do, not let Miami's ground game really open it up for the passing game. When Miami has run the ball well, they've usually won. Back out of the shotgun, trips again. And another handoff goes to Jones. He will only get a couple of yards on the second down and 10 play. Tosh Henley coming up and Landon Cohen part of the stop as well. You know, Corey Jones is a guy for Miami that you know, really didn't play at all. You know, he's a senior and didn't have any snaps coming into this and has stepped up and played pretty well for the Red Hawks but the Bobcat defense on top of things there. 
So third down and six, ball on the 47 for Radabaugh on this Miami offense, a chance for the Cats defense to come up big early. Firing and no one there at all. A little bit of pressure coming through. Landon Cohen getting in Radabaugh's face a bit. Now the big senior got off his man, got right up the middle into his face, and they knew Miami was going to throw the ball that time, and that's what Miami talks about not being one-dimensional. Here come the Bobcats. You see great spin move from Landon Cohen right up in Radabaugh. Ball goes high, and Ohio will get the football back. He's a guy that scouts have looked at and hoped that he could add a little bit more weight to his frame, but Ohio's coaches have actually tried to keep him down a little bit so he could play quick like that. This will be Richardson to punt. Short kick, fair caught by Mark Parson, and the Bobcats will take things over with the ball at the 18-yard line. 37-yard punt for Jake Richardson, the senior out of Oxford for the Red Hawks. He's actually seventh in the NCAA in punting, so he is a good kicker there. Well, you see the Bobcat offense set to come out. They're going to face the number one defense in the MAC, a defense that threw a shutout against Akron, the only shutout in the conference this year, a defense that's number one in scoring, number one in rushing defense. And there's, uh, look at that right there, Theo Scott gets the start at quarterback. How about that? Theo Scott starting in place of Brad Bauer. Scott's been hampered by the groin injury a little bit, but he, he will come out. He'll give the pitch to Calvin McCray. Calvin's got some room. Good looking run by McCray. Get him about nine yards, and Ohio needs to see a lot of that. A lot of that today, and they will see a steady diet of McCray. Oh, just a simple pitch around the end, and Cal McCray has done this so many times. Gets right behind big number 39, Mitch Morcillo. Able to pick up a big first uh, first down carry. Nine yards, make a second one for Ohio. McCray, you just get the feeling how special a play here he is. How everybody on this program wants to see McCray finish this up with a big day. McCray gets the fake, Theo Scott will boot. Little shovel pass, and a big hit, but the completions there found David Carter, one of the two outstanding tight ends for this Bobcat offense. Tough spot, gets him just back to the line. And you see he's had the groin injury, and you have to check to see his little ginger right there with the sidestep and decides just to shuffle it ahead. Doesn't quite pick up the first down. Caleb Bostic with a big hit for the Red Hawks, part of this Outstanding Miami linebacking core. Clayton Mullins on the weak side and Joey Hudson up front. Let's take a look at the Bobcat offensive line. Josh Luke did not practice a couple times this week, but he's getting to go at uh, left tackle. David Shelby, the senior at the right side. Skill possessions, Taylor Price got some speed. Chris Garrett will move all around. David Carter and Andrew Mooney will play at tight ends and Theo Scott getting the start and he will option the ball. A nice run to pick up the first down as Calvin McRae finally wrestled down by Mullins. Well, not too many secrets on third and one. Who's going to get the football? It's been <laughs> like that for a couple of years, and there's Calvin McRae heading back to the huddle. Such a workmanlike effort. It's Theo Scott, he knows where he's going to go with this. A couple steps down the line, takes the shot, but Calvin McRae, again, stiff arm, gets ridden out of bounds, but not before he picks up the first down. Ohio's all-time leading rusher also has, came into the game with 1,322 yards. That's the best single season ever for a Bobcat running back. We'll keep an eye on a few more numbers for you from McCray today. First and 10 from the 33. And a give to the wide receiver. He's got no room at all. That's Garrett. Snuffed by a Miami front seven that plays very well as a unit. One of the things you mentioned, Matt, Miami's defense getting the only shutout so far in the conference. And you know, Caniglio up front leads them in sacks. Joe Caniglio has five and a half sacks. There's the linebackers we told you about, Bostic, Hudson, and Mullins. Defensively, they will play in Apache. It's strong safety, Robbie Williams back there. He will be the Apache, and the free safety will always be to one side of the field. Well, that front seven, the strength of the Miami Redhawks. Guys across like Mester, Clayton Mullins have just been sensational to turn Miami around this year. Fake for Scott. Had him fooled for a minute, but Mullins will hit him and knock him down, and that'll put the Bobcats exactly where they don't want to be. Third down and long. And I think Theo Scott thought he had his man behind him, and he really was. And you see Theo with a good fake inside to Calvin. Of course, people are going to follow that. Now watch him make one man miss. Yeah, not really. Never got out of the grasp. Clayton Theo Mullins Scott. right there. Yeah, Clayton Mullins right on, on, on top and snuffed out the play. Had a chance to to beat the block up front. Not many people get away from Clayton Mullins for Miami. Yeah, Made a big true. hit against Akron, caused a fumble, really secured that victory for the Red Hawks. 
Uh, one report has him as the MAC Defensive Player of the Year, one of the online reports, solid play. So on third down and long, it's Scott, has a little time, finally throws out. And it's like he just sort of got rid of it or a little bit of miscommunication, so that'll mean the Bobcats will have to punt in their first possession. We'll bring on the punting unit with Matt Schulte, the Ohio punter. And Shane Montgomery's team gets a an Ohio turnover right away. Cats certainly want to keep out of third down and long. Didn't get it there. Schulte on the season's got a 37.4 yard average and he'll have plenty of real estate to kick this one. Gets it off, high kick. Letting it bounce is Eugene Harris and it goes out of bounds at the 23 yard line and that's where the Miami Red Hawks will have a chance to take things over when we come back 0-0 here on the Ohio Bobcat Sports Network. Just underway here in Athens, Ohio, the Bobcats and Red Hawks scoreless five minutes into the contest. Frank Solich's team has seen his defense head out there and hold Miami after a first down, but his offense didn't do too, too much better. We saw Theo Scott actually getting the start. We had thought it would be Brad Bauer, but Matt, Theo, uh, Theo getting the start. He was stuffed by Shane Montgomery's team uh, early on in this possession, first possession for Ohio. You see Shane Montgomery's record there, third year, 15 and 19, but what a turnaround this year. From two and 10 a year ago, now they're heading to the MAC championship game next week. Done a great job getting this team going. Ladaba, the play fake, will fire under pressure. Hey. Throws long, it was Lee Renfro getting in to Radabaugh's face a little bit. You hear the coaches yelling to set your feet, but the pressure was coming pretty quickly up the middle. Renfro able to break free, and that's what the Bobcats are gonna have to do during this game. Miami, again, not known for that strong running game, so they're gonna be throwing the ball. And here comes Renfro right on the outside, and you see he just kind of lobs it up toward the middle of the field, hoping somebody makes a play. And Gibbons could not get there, so second down and long for the Red Hawks. Chris Gibbons out of Chillicothe, a guy who can stretch the field. He's off of the field right now as it's an empty backfield for Radabaugh. He's another one of those screens, gets it out. It's stuffed by Todd Koenig. No room at all for Ohio. A big play for the senior. That'll make things third down, then and long. See, Radabaugh looks over quickly. Again, pressure coming, but Nobody picks up Canning on that play right there. And I think it's because Ohio comes out and kind of throws the tempo up just enough that Canning is able to slip through untouched to make the play. Tried to get the pass there to Jamal Rogers. He's a burner, got a lot of speed. Future track guy probably for Miami, just a true freshman out of Fort Myers. That's why that first hit is so key for the Bobcat defenders. Got to bring him down and avoid the big play. Third and 11 and Ohio cannot make the stop. Armand Robinson. The long reception, and boy, just when you get them, get them where you want them to be, they convert. Well, that time, Radabaugh able to set the feet, move outside the pocket just a little bit, and you'll see he's got the split backs. Plenty of time this time, and nice job finding the open man on the sideline to move the chains, and boy, just a, just a sensational grab. An 18-yard pass for the first down. We'll put the Red Hawks now at the 41-yard line as they move the chains here on their second possession. Robinson, who made the catch, another young receiver, red shirt freshman for Miami. Very young all the way in the receiving core. This time it'll be the handoff. That's to Thomas Merriweather. He won't get much. You know, one, of the, one of the most interesting stats that I saw looking at this Miami team is that they've had 18 different receivers all make receptions this year. Like we said, Routaball is going to spread it out. And this time, again, just looking for a hole, and Koenig fills it up. And the Bobcats, again, strong against the run. Three-yard gain will make it second and seven for the Red Hawks here on their second possession of a 0-0 ball game. Be out of the shotgun again. Merriweather going to stay in there. It'll be a pass. Complete to Rodgers. Scores color down by Julian Posey. Out before a first down for the Red Hawks. Rogers just found the soft spot right there, sat down, caught the ball, and Roundaball had plenty of time on this one. You see number 55, Landon Cohen, doing the spin move, trying to break up, but nobody able to get inside. Finally, the pass complete on the outside. You know, Pose, Julian Posey making the tackle. He's a guy who has had an up and down year, just a uh, 
redshirt freshman, has really come on strong a little bit later in the year. The beginning part of the year was rough for him. This time it's the handoff. We've got hankies all over the place. Merriweather with about a five yard gain. We'll see what the call is. Looked like somebody grabbed a face mask coming through the line. About seven people possibly. <laughs> It will be a 15-yard or a personal foul face mask. Frank Solich cannot be happy uh, about that call. There you see it. Couldn't, uh, it was Landon Cohen just scraping across, yeah. trying to grab jersey, and he grabbed face mask instead. In Miami, this time now able to move the chains on the ground, and that's what Frank Solich and the defensive crew really want to avoid. When Miami runs the ball, they want to make a second and 10, second and 11. If Miami is able to churn out first downs, pick up four or five yards on the ground, it's going to make it for a much easier experience for Radabaugh. Radabaugh on this drive, three of four for 30 yards. He's been moving the chains quite a bit through the air as well. Almost going off sides, but getting back. Radabaugh will fire up. It's up for Robinson and knocked away. Fine play by Mark Parson. You know, one thing that's really hurt this Ohio team, if you look back at their whole season, it's been those penalties. You, know, the, the, you hate to say that, that, a, that a play or two either way could make things different, but the penalties have certainly hurt them. A good defensive play here, though. Yeah, Parson able to get his hands up, turned, turned his head, found the ball, knocked the ball away. Nothing fancy about that play for the Red Hawks, just trying to isolate one-on-one -on -one in the corner and make the play. Second down and 10, ball at the 25 for Radabaugh and the Red Hawk offense. He's got a single back, it's Merriweather. Hitch, go, and wide open, and he finds Dustin Woods. Down to the one-yard line. Dustin Woods at the two-yard line. First and goal, Miami. Boy, just, just, just Hitch and had a, had a shot and found, found, found him wide open. Well, they didn't hitch the first time. They just threw the uh, threw the fade. This time they hitch and Parson bites. And a big time catch from Dustin Woods. You see just an easy fake, pump fake, and Roudabaugh puts it right on the money, but a nice play to gather it in down at the one yard line. Steven Jackson come over to help perhaps a little bit late. It's at the one yard line. Merriweather's in there. He will get it. it looks like he stopped short of the goal line from, from the two yard line. Merriweather a guy that has had three touchdowns, and because of this uh, trouble with the running back situation and all of the injuries for Miami, had to burn a red shirt this year and play as a true freshman. Made the most of it with three TDs. He's a hard runner and down by the goal line, can find the end zone. And that Miami offensive line, you know, Miami's offensive lines, that's, that's their trademark. The offensive lineman, the strength, the power up front, they try and push it in right here. Second and goal from the one. They'll do just that. It's Thomas Merriweather getting his fourth touchdown of the season and more importantly putting the Bobcats behind six to nothing early on in the game. Thomas Merriweather, 5'10", 200 pounds, a handful of carries on the season. Ohio, the penalty once again coming back to haunt the Bobcats. For the point after, this will be Nathan Parsegian is the Great grandnephew of the college coaching legend, Era Parsegian. Struggles a bit, but knocks it through. Makes it seven to nothing. Miami gets the early lead on a Thomas Merriweather touchdown. Seven nothing Red Hawks when we come back. And now, a word from Ohio University's 20th president, Roderick J. McDavis. At Ohio University, Ohio Bobcats got a win last year in the series. The last one before that, back to 1999, where the Ohio defense came out strong. Tom Carter with a sack of Mike Bath. Joe Sherrill, a quick touchdown. And then a freshman quarterback by the name of Don Trail Jackson. Nobody touched him as he got into the end zone. Head coach Jim Grove gets a win, 40 to 28 on this field, and they brought the goalpost down. A win in 1999 for the Bobcats in the Battle of the Bricks. Big win back in 99, and right now Ohio's got a little deficit to catch up on. 7 0 here with 6.43 left to go in the first quarter. 
pretty solid effort on the goalpost that year because there weren't that many people on top. Well, few, see, few a lot of times they grease them just to make sure you can't do that. But that was that was some some definite uh, some definite effort to, to bring it down. Harsikian with the kickoff, back deep to receive and heading his way is Chris Garrett, but it's going to bounce out of bounds. Well, break for the Bobcats as they'll get to set up shop. Had a chance to talk to some folks from Miami, and the one thing that uh, they've uh, they've discussed is they've had some woes in their kicking game. Parsegian and also Trevor Cook, pretty much 40 yards is their length, and you see him having trouble on the kickoff. And it's one of the things with the, the new ruling, they're going to do it again. It again. And, yep. You know, that's a good call, I'd say, for uh, Frank Solich. Well, Chris Garrett. And Joshua Abrams, the two guys back for Ohio, both explosive. Both guys who can go the distance and set you up with great field position. So moving the kick back to the 25, the Bobcats should have excellent field position, and they want to answer on this drive. Josh Abrams out there on senior day. He's a guy that's done just about everything he's been asked for for the Ohio Bobcats. We think back to the first game of the year in which he had three blocked punts. Special teams, Dynamo, good kick returner, and of course, Chris Garrett with plenty of wheels out there as well. Kick from the 25, this one sneaks inbounds to Garrett. He'll pick it up at the 10. Shifts ahead. Boy, he accelerates in a hurry. Gets it all the way up to about the 34-yard line. That'll give the Cats good field position, so the choice to make him kick it again forces a good return by Garrett. So Ohio will start things at the 34-yard line. Miami went down the field, 10 plays, 77 yards for 325. Daniel Radabaugh had an outstanding drive, four of six, 53 yards. A couple of long passes for Woods and Robinson. That got him down there for the Merriweather touchdown. Let's see what Theo Scott can do in his second uh, attempt for Ohio. Give the fake, look to throw. Scott will coach open, just overthrows him. Now that's one of the things that uh, we had heard from some of the coaches that Ohio's going to take their shots deep. You know, they're going to attack those safeties of Miami. You see, again, once uh, Cal McCray gets the fake, people are going to follow. It's going to open up some lanes for Theo Scott to throw the football. This time, Noah Coach is just not able to break free to the deepest part of the field to get to the football. But what Ohio wants to do is open some lanes for Calvin. They know Miami's strong. Linebacking core of Miami, very strong up front. They're going to be focused on Calvin McRae. It's almost the opposite. The, the Bobcats want to make sure they can rely on the run in the second half. Calvin just two carries so far. He won't get it here either. It goes to Garrett. Nice run as he came over in motion. Gets about four yards on second down and ten. Make it a little bit more manageable third down and third down and about six for Ohio. Oh, we're getting a designed pitch on the outside to get the ball into Garrett's hands. Good job by the Miami defense staying home too because Garrett is always one step away from breaking a touchdown run. Miami giving a lot of respect to Calvin McCray and as well they should. Calvin just two carries so far on the day with 16 yards. The senior playing his last game at home here for the green and white. Looking to climb up on the record books. Ohio's all time leading rusher. He'll be next to Theo Scott on the third down and six play. Scott in trouble. We'll flip it down. And a nice completion. And nearly having a chance to break things was Andrew Mooney. And that's what Theo Scott brings to the football team on the offensive side. Theo Scott that time just trying to buy a little bit of time. He's looking, he can't find anybody, so he decides to scramble up front and then just flip the ball to Andrew Mooney, who's able to break it free. Almost had a touchdown right there. Ankle stopping touchdown uh, tackle for the Red Hawks. And Mooney takes it all the way down to the 34-yard line. Mooney's been a great addition to this Ohio offense. Picks up 28 on that play and brings the Bobcats a first down at 10. See the pitch to Calvin. He's got some jets. A super run by Calvin McCray brings it down to the 8-yard line. 26-yard run for McCray. Gets the Cats at first and goal. Just execution on this option play. Theo Scott straight down the line. Now watch the fullback, number 39, Mitch Morsillo. Get on the outside of your man. Get on the outside, keep him to the inside, and that opens up that lane for Calvin McRae. And McRae, tough to bring down, all the way down to the nine yard line. But again, watch the fullback. He knows Calvin wants to get to the outside. He's gonna make sure nobody's out there with him. 
Great block, didn't see it as well on that one, but McCray takes advantage. So Ohio first and goal from the eight yard line. Calvin, three carries for 42 yards. He'll get a fourth one. And he powers nearly into the end zone again, brings it down to the two. Calvin McCray knocking on the door. Ohio down by seven points. A touchdown would do a whole lot of things for the Bobcats. McCray, another powerful run. Finally tripped up at the two yard line. Bobcats will do it again there, second and two. Calvin McCray just one touchdown away from the all time touching touchdown mark here at Ohio. Yeah, tie Kareem Wilson with that, with one more touchdown. And I'd say odds are he's gonna get it again here in second and two. That is after a timeout for the Bobcats. The play clock was ticking down and Theo Scott looked up and noticed it and called timeout just in time. You know, we, mentioned the, we mentioned the things that uh, Brad Bauer brings to the table, Theo Scott, one of the things that he's learned to do a little bit more for the Ohio Bobcats is manage the game. You know, one of the things he struggled in was managing the game and had a little bit of trouble there, as you mentioned, with the, the play clock, getting things moving on. Brad Bauer, the senior, you see him on the sideline as well. Theo Scott looking out to the offense. We talk about Calvin McCray. You have to understand how special it is for an offensive line to know that you've done this and helped this guy reach these marks. So these guys know they want to get Calvin in the end zone right now. And you saw the last play where Calvin was able to take it down to the three-yard line. You see the big guys up there through some nice blocks, created just a gap. And that's all Calvin has needed since he stepped on, was just a little crease. Got such great feet, he's got great balance, good vision. He's able to turn uh, what should be a two or three yard gain sometimes into eight, nine, 10, or even uh, big long runs. And a guy that always falls forward. Can't, can't be said enough of that to fall forward and pick up a couple extra yards. He only needs two on this carry, second down and two. Calvin the deep back. Scott will play fake the boot out. Looks like he's gonna fire it up, and that's Andrew Mooney for the touchdown. A two-yard touchdown pass to Andrew Mooney, and speaking of a guy, into the record books for Ohio. Andrew Mooney in his first season as a Bobcat now with eight receiving TDs. That's the single season mark, ties him atop the single season mark with eight touchdowns, a super boot by Calvin. A great boot by Calvin and a great pickup block by Calvin McCray, uh, or by Theo, uh, had the great boot. Calvin had a great pickup block. Everyone looking for Calvin to get it, and Mooney able to sneak into the back of the end zone. And a super pickup there. Of course it was Theo with the, the boot. <laughs> I, I got Calvin on the brain. We were hoping he was going to get it. Either way, it's a Bobcat touchdown, and Michael Bronstein will put it through the uprights to tie up the score. Andrew Mooney, a two-yard touchdown reception, ties the Bobcats at seven apiece here on the Ohio Bobcat Sports Network. Ohio University's Cutler Hall. It represents a proud heritage and has been the university's only structure built primarily with private dollars until now. This fall, the Russ College of Engineering and Technology and the College of Osteopath. The Ohio Bobcat Sports Network on GTN is brought to you by AEP, the Citizens Bank of Athens, State Farm Insurance, and by Imke Northwest Honda, where our values bring you in and our people bring you back. The Ohio Bobcats have tied things up at seven apiece here on the Battle of the Bricks. A precision drive moved down the field pretty quickly. Andrew Mooney, the recipient of a two yard touchdown from Theo Scott, six plays, 66 yards in a little less than two minutes as the Ohio offense moved things down the field. You know, one senior that we have sort of haven't talked too much about for these Bobcats is gonna come out and kick the ball down the field. That's Michael Bronstein. Listen to this stat. He is now, in his entire career, converted 71 consecutive PATs. Not too bad. Mr. Automatic. Not too bad at all. Of course, Bronstein came from the University of Washington was able to come as a graduate student, did not have to sit a year out, able to come right into Frank Solich's program. You talk about not missing a beat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's a, a rule that's actually since been rescinded by the NCAA, but Michael Bronstein came here for Ohio's excellent academics, here for the Master of Sports Administration program, and that's what she's currently enrolled. We'll hear more about Ohio's academics a little bit later on in the broadcast, but back to football. Short kick by Bronstein. 
Rodgers has a little trouble. Finally, the three. He'll see a sea of green, and that's where he'll be. You know, a lot of times you see a, when a player mishandles something on a return, it, it throws off the coverage team, but not there. Ohio on top of things. You know, football such a game of momentum, Jason. We always talk about it. And you had to wonder, how was Ohio going to respond after Miami went the length of the field, put the ball in, the Bobcats, yes, playing for a 6-6 six and six season. It's senior day, but Miami's got a lot on the line here. They want to win this game, move on to the MAC championship with a winning record, and really solidify that bowl chance. If the Bobcats able to answer and then pin them deep inside their own five-yard line here on Miami's third possession of the football game. Bowl game not sewn up for Miami at all. They need to win at least one out of the next two. They need to get out of their own backyard. The Cats are hoping to stop them there. Hand off and stuffing them down. Steven Jackson with the hit gets about two yards. Corey Jones getting the carry as the parade of running backs for the Red Hawks comes in. Jackson just came up, hit him high, and, and you see the Bobcats, they didn't really uh, buy the play fake on that one. They didn't follow Routabaugh as he uh, finished the handoff around in the bootleg. He'll have himself a second down and nine from the six yard line, about four minutes left to go here in the first. And I'd imagine they're probably gonna give another handoff at, the, at this point again. Right on cue, they dump. Radabaugh's in trouble, and the Bobcats bring him down at the one-yard line. A host of Ohio tacklers inside. Todd Caning there, Jamison Hartke there. A big, big play for the Cats. Let's head down to Matt Barnes and hear more about this Bobcat defense. Yeah, Todd Henley, you see him not on the field right now, but he was very active on the sideline in the face of his safeties after Miami's last drive. Looks like he's got that Ohio defense fired up here. Big third down play, trying to stop the Red Hawks down to their end zone. Back to you guys. You see Taj in there jumping up and down. One of the seniors, Todd Koenig, another senior on this team. A third down and 14, ball on the one yard line. Radabaugh hears a little bit too much, so he needs to talk things over with his head coach, Shane Montgomery. Well, probably a good call by Radabaugh right there. Wasn't sure what Ohio, what front Ohio was in. Besides, it's time just to go ahead and talk it over with Coach Shane Montgomery. On the play before that, when he took the sack, the, the pocket just really collapsed on him. I think he thought he was going to have another second, second and a half to kind of figure out where he wanted to go to the ball or let somebody break open in the middle of the field. Just didn't get it. Ohio's defensive line has been very active. We saw it early on that first possession, and now right back again. Ohio able to get pressure on the quarterback. The Bobcats have had a very strong front seven and, and very tough with Jimmy Burrow, usually a blitzing coach, and came through there. Well, for, for complete coverage of Ohio Athletics, there's only one place to go. Log on to ohiobobcats.com for up-to-date information on the Bobcats. It's ohiobobcats.com, and it's the official website of Ohio Athletics. The Ohio Bobcats, a big play defensively, now has them looking to shut down Miami even further. A third down and 14 play at the one yard line. Now the Bobcats want to keep it in front of them, keep the football in front of them. Miami's receivers able to break tackles and make big plays. Six on the play clock and Radabaugh gets it off and he's firing. Oh, just like that, ball is complete. Eugene Harris rounding things off. Bad turner on the coverage for the Bobcats. That is one that you just cannot have him. Well, Harris knew where he had to get, where the first down marker was, and watch the play fake freezes. The Ohio's right side of the defensive line, no pressure, and it's right on the money, and a great catch, single, uh, a great catch by Harris to pick up the first down. Gets him right past that marker, puts it at the 18-yard line, a 17-yard reception for Harris and Miami keeps the, the chains rolling despite some tough play up front for the Cats. Radabaugh on a shotgun, fire again. Same side of the field and wide open and running is Dustin Woods. Long gainer by the red shirt sophomore out of Cincinnati, 20 yards on the play. Now, Radabaugh comes off the field shaking his hand a little bit, but you see just a quick, quick slant pattern. Ohio brought the safety blitz with Jackson and Woods able to just find the crease right in the middle of the field for the first down. Daniel Radabaugh has been in charge of this Miami offense because Mike Kokel went down and Radabaugh's numbers so far pretty good today. Seven out of 10 for 106 
All in a little less than one quarter's worth of action. This time he'll let somebody else do the work, and they don't do much. Getting stuffed by Steven Jackson was Corey Jones with another carry. Gets only about two on a first down carry. Well, and again, that was just to keep the Ohio defense uh, honest. Route of ball is getting into a bit of a rhythm. He's able to find his receivers. He throws some really nice passes. Uh, but Ohio's middle of the line really waiting for the running game of Miami. A little bit surprised to hear that the senior, if Mike Kokel was able to go, been nagged with a knee injury throughout the year. He'd still be in charge of this Miami offense because, quite honestly, Radovall has played pretty well throughout the season and showing it so far in about a quarter today. Fires it up this time and a little bit long, but Dustin Woods had a step. Ohio brought the house a little bit. Radovall fired up, had single coverage, but threw it a little bit long. Well, he only had about a half a second to decide <laughs> where exactly he wanted to put that football. And you see him talking to the coaches on the sidelines. Ohio brought some serious pressure on that, which left single coverage with a safety on the outside. Stephen Jackson was beaten, but Radovall really did not have time to put that ball where he had to put it. So that puts Miami back in third and eight, just before the end of the first. Ohio's defense to come up strong here on third down and eight. Another shotgun formation for Miami. We hear a whistle come across. And somebody might have moved early. Prior to the snap, false start, number 11 on the offense. Five yard penalty, remains third down. So that'll move Miami back five yards. Armand Robinson. Redshirt freshman out of Reynoldsburg, uh, moving a little bit early. As a receiver, you just go when the, when the, the ball moves. When the ball moves, you just go. We'll make it third down and 13. Same formation again for the Red Hawks. Ohio with an extra defensive back in, three down linemen. They bring some pressure. Radabaugh fires, and it's incomplete. Pressure again for the Bobcats coming up strong. And the Bobcat defense able to hold after the big third down conversion for the Red Hawks down near their own goal line. And that time they moved Jamison Hartke back off the line and then let him kind of have a running start. You'll see the big number 90 coming in from the other side of your screen and he's able to put just a little bit of pressure on it again. Roundabout not able to find that rhythm. So Miami has to punt the football away. Hartke's moved around a little bit this year. Richardson gets the punt off up high. Parsons back. Oh, a fair catch, but he gets knocked down. He's still down on the ground. The flag's obviously coming out. Ooh, those Paris Edwards interfering with the receiver. Mark Parson, he is having trouble. You know, Mark Parson, obviously somebody the Bobcats don't want to do with that, and he did just take a a shot as he was trying to fair catch that football. It's a 43-yard punt by Jake Richardson. 15 yards from the end of the kick. First down. 15-yard penalty for the interference with Mark Parson. So he limps off the field. Matt Barnes, I'm sure we'll get an update on his situation. Matt, as you mentioned, not a guy the Bobcats would want to see go down at all. So we'll bring out the Ohio offense again, and Theo Scott let him down the field for a tying touchdown. This time he looks to put him ahead, and he'll have the ball at the 37-yard line. He can really do so many things with his hands in the football. We saw a lot of that during the last drive. Now the key is for him to put it in back-to-back -back drives, to do it again, to do it consistently for Ohio. Scott play fakes again, fires, looking for David Carter, and does not connect. Pretty interesting so far, though. The Bobcats trying to assert themselves through the air and hopefully grind things away a little bit with Calvin McCray. You haven't, haven't really seen him go to Calvin all that much. A couple possessions so far. Well, when, when Calvin, I shouldn't say he struggled this year, but when he didn't have his big, big games, it's when everybody in the stadium knew that Calvin was going to get the football and they just could not get anything else going. But right now, Ohio able to mix it up a little bit with Theo Scott on the outside of the pocket, throw into the tight end, should open some things up for Calvin McCray on his final game in the Bobcat uniform. Second down and 10, Calvin is your lone setback. In motion is Garrett. Will be Calvin McCray getting it to pick up a couple yards. One thing that he's very good at too is in the second half if the game is close, 
Ohio has a little bit of lead. He salts that clock away. Cats will have things now on third down and nine. Play fake comes through. And Calvin gets his fifth carry and only gets a, about a yard on that. Five carries for 49 yards for McCray, so averaging a pretty good clip whenever he touches the ball. Less than a minute to go here in the first quarter, tied at seven. Third down and long for Ohio. Cats do not like these situations. Theo Scott rolling out, he's in trouble. He's set a little bit, comes back across, finds Brazil. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Well, Theo Scott wanted to go down the field. The Miami Redhawks lead the conference in sacks. They were bringing some pressure on Theo Scott. Keeps his feet moving, just looking for something. You'll see they bring the linebacker on the blitz. A little bit of a stunt, and Theo is able to move the pocket just a little bit, but nobody opened down the field. Finally just dumps it off. Caleb Bosta giving chase there. Strong side linebacker. Cats will punt things away. We'll give Matt Schulte a chance to get in there and pin the Red Hawks deep. Return is picked up at the 23. Nice looking spin. Finally, Harris is, gets about 10 yards and gets knocked down. We'll turn the offense back over again to Daniel Radabaugh after the nice 46-yard punt. Matt Schulte has struggled at times, but it gets a good punt there. Taking things over at the 31-yard line will be the Red Hawks and Frank Solich's defense. Let's hope get another stop here. Miami with 106 yards passing and just about a quarter of play against this Ohio defense. Go to the ground first. Give was to Merriweather. Ending up the first quarter, probably going to be our last play of the first quarter. So Ohio 7-7 seven and seven so far. You saw both teams come out and throw a little bit. But the Bobcats are right where they want to be, right in this game, tied here on Senior Day at 7-7. Seven and seven. We'll have the second quarter coming up. 7-7 seven, seven in the Battle of the Bricks. Welcome back to Peden Stadium. The Bobcats nodded at seven with the Red Hawks, and one of our keys to the game, Matt Shepard, was stop Miami from running the football through one quarter of play, 10 carries for 13 yards. So Ohio getting it done defensively, at least against the Red Hawk ground game. And the reason why they won, not that Miami's been ultra successful running the football, but when Miami becomes so one-dimensional, they are not as successful moving the football. And Routeball, though, so far today, has just been sensational. He will get a hanky on this play. Looked like too much time. Play clocks at zero. And you don't see that too yeah. often coming out of a quarter break. <laughs> Not at all. Let's take a look at your first quarter stats. Miami throwing the ball quite a bit. Cal McCray has the bulk of those 53 yards. But look at that time of possession. Nine minutes for Miami. We'll have things again here now on second down and 14. The delay a game coming out of the break. Radabaugh will fire, it's tipped up and nearly coming up with the interception was Julian Posey. Got some flags in there a little bit late. It's gotta be on the offense. Posey looked like he did play pretty good defensively there. Although the way he's hanging his head, probably not. And right on cue, thank you with the call. Wow. And uh to see that one again, that ball was tipped and I, I uh... Pass interference, number nine on the defense. Ball spotted at the point of the foul. Automatic first down. Referee Raymond Vaughn giving the call on that. Ball was tipped though, Matt. Yeah, Frank, that's what Frank's yelling on the sideline. Frank Sola yelling, that ball was tipped. And uh, you know, once the ball is tipped, the defender can go after the receiver and try and knock him out of the way. Everyone has free game at the ball at that point. But the officials don't see it that way. Instead, uh, first down for Miami. Well, run on this first down. Stuffing it out as the Bobcat defense. Landon Cohen right there, the senior. With a huge play up front for Ohio. Well, Cohen, the senior, just breaks free. And uh, Miami still trying to stick with, to establish something on the ground. 
to give Roundabout a little break so Ohio can't bring the blitz every time it landed. Cohen having nothing of that. Another tackle for a loss for Cohen. Third different running back used today by Miami. That was TJ Lattimore, Landon Cohen. A guy who's done a super job in the middle for the Cats, a senior playing his last game at home. Second and 12, Radabaugh fires out. He's got to complete. This one's going to go to his tight end, Jake O'Connell. Some extracurricular play afterwards. Flags come in. I think they're going to get Landon Cohen for a late hit on the sidelines. Let's take another look and see if we can pick it up. It's going to come after the play. It's actually away from the play. You're going to see uh, Michael Brown make the play right there, Taj Henley make it. And then off of the play, you may see somebody come falling in, and they got uh, Landon Cohen, I believe, on a hit kind of away from the ball. Neil Jarrah been there at the last uh, last play to finish off that tackle. Jarrah been there at safety for Michael Mitchell. He and Steven Jackson have played a lot of the first quarter. Michael Mitchell, a guy who's playing today in a club. He's got a cast on his hand. Weren't sure how much he could go today, so Neil Jarrah getting some playing time. Radabon, first down, has time, steps up. And pass is juggled and falls down. Knocked away by Julian Posey. Trying to find Dustin Woods. Again, Ohio able to get some pressure out of the interior line. They bring a blitz from a linebacker. You see Jameson Harkey forces Routeball back inside. Then Tyus Henley makes it through just a second early, but just nice coverage by, nice play by Julian Posey, Posey yeah. out on the outside. Very nice play by Posey. Guy that we mentioned did step up as a redshirt freshman. Latter half of the season, he has played very, very good football at the corner for Ohio. Make it second down and 10. Bobcat 46 yard line. Radabaugh, a little screen. This one to his tight end. Tom Crabtree. Slip ahead for about five yards. You see what Miami, the Red Hawks, are doing right now. The running game is not working. So on first down pass, second down, very short pass, almost like a run. You want to pick up four or five yards. You don't want to put your quarterback in third and 10, third and 11 all day long. This time, just a quick dump off. Make the Bobcat defenders make open field tackles because when the running backs are getting the ball, Ohio's gang tackling right now. I mean, they're all over. So bring up a third down and four for Miami. The 40-yard line. Radabaugh again at the shotgun. Sets and fires underneath just off the hands of Armand Robinson. Where is the flag coming from? See it coming late. Both of us throwing our arms up in the air. Now the Bobcats again saying the football was tipped. And I don't think the refs are going to buy that one. I think they're going to say there's interference on Ohio. Yeah, they sure do. That's the call. Frank Solich is just irate on the Bobcat sideline. You can see Frank Solich on the sideline is really looking at You see the ball right there. I can't tell if it, well, it was tipped. It was. Uh, and I don't know where the interference was either. But uh, it's going to be another big, big penalty against the Ohio Bobcats. And once again, keeping a Miami drive alive. Yeah, that's going to spot Pass the interference ball. on the defense. Number nine, ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Spots the ball at the 33-yard line as Frank Solich trying to plead his case, but it's a little bit too late. You see he right here, I don't know if you're going to be able to see the tip come. Yet, oh, definitely tipped. It was a no-doubter. That ball was tipped. We got another flag down there near the Ohio sideline as well. On Ohio, 15-yard penalty, first down. An unsportsmanlike conduct call on the Bobcats. Perhaps a little bit too much John, or somebody said something to an official, but penalties just continuing to hurt the Bobcats, and Frank Solich cannot be happy at all. So that'll take it from where it was spotted at the 33. That'll move it 15 yards to the 18-yard line. So Miami has done very little offensively on this drive. The Bobcats have just been hammered by penalty after penalty. Legged them all season and does so on this drive. The handoff to Lattimore. Nice run, cuts up for about five yards. Cats again today, six for 63 yards in penalties. One point, one of, one of the most penalized teams in the country. Trouble again today. Miami, on the other hand, four for 30 yards in penalties. 
Bring up second down and five. Ball now on the 13 for Miami. Score not in its sevens. Radabaugh back out of the shotgun, still with Lattimore out there as his running back. That's where the give will go. He slides up, and there's that gang tackle, and he gets nowhere. You get the feeling the Ohio defense is a little bit of a chip on its shoulder right now because I think they feel like they should have been off the field six or seven plays ago. And then if it weren't for four or five penalties on this drive, they would have gotten out. But you see one more time, just a stack up on the front right there. All kinds of Bobcats. Landon Cohen <laughs> pulling the running back back off the pile. And now again, another big third down with the Bobcat defense trying to get off the field. It'll be third and five for the Miami offense as Ohio tries to stop this drive and end it perhaps with only three. Empty backfield, Radabaugh to fire, does so near side, complete near the chains and looks like it will be a first down. Gets it to Jake O'Connell, his tight end. And the Ohio defense needed to stop and after they've got themselves in a little bit of trouble, they could not come up with it there. You know, he just finds his man right across the middle and uh, able to find just a bit of a, uh, a soft spot for O'Connell to find himself in, and the Bobcats give up the first down. Michael Brown and Taj Henley coming up to make the tackle. We'll put it inside the 10-yard line. Ball spotted seven and a half for Miami. First and goal. High formation. Lattimore still in there as the back. They get the carry. Again, stopped by the Ohio defense. Miami not able to do anything running the ball, but when they need to pass so far, they've been able to do so. Taj Henley, the senior, coming up to make the stop. Well, that time Miami put a tight end, Tom Crabtree, into the backfield to serve as a, serve as a blocking back. Didn't really, uh, Lattimore didn't really follow the block too much, and you see Henley coming up and just making the play. And again, Miami having a hard time finding just a small crease to run the football in. But to this point, the combination of penalties, some great catches by Miami receivers, and Routeball really being in rhythm for a good part of this game. The running game is really just served to try and keep that middle of the Ohio defense honest. It'll be second down and seven, no gain on the play for Miami. Corey Jones back into the game and running back, and he'll be to the right of Routeball as he gets back to his familiar shotgun. Trips to your far side of your screen. Looked like somebody moved early. Yeah, there will be some flags and that most likely will be the call. Full start on the offense, number 17, five yard penalty, remains second down. Chris Givens moving a little bit too early. He was in the slot. One of the three receivers in that game. So far, Matt, the rushing totals, 14 carries for 16 yards for the Red Hawks. Now one of our keys, Ohio is getting it done, although the penalties on this drive certainly hurting them quite a bit. And Miami's gonna stick with it. They, they do not want to become a one-dimensional throwing football team during this football game. And now, though, backed up a little bit, second down and 12, receivers everywhere. Radovall looks to find one. The fade is up towards Robinson a little bit too far. And will do it again on third down and long. They have a penalty. Boy, it looked like Henley got in there with Radovall. That's where the flag came from. Radovall a bit shaken up. Radovall tried to throw the fade into the corner of the end zone. And he is uh, shaken up. We'll be, we'll be roughing the passer is the call. Taj Henley got in there. You see Mike Coco get up, the senior. He looks like he is maybe coming into the game right now. He's talking with Radabaugh and Montgomery. Frank Solich and his squad. Another penalty. And another first down on a penalties for Ohio, 51 yards worth of penalties just on this drive for the Bobcats. That'll put things at first and goal from the six yard line and they get a fresh set of downs, see if they can do it again. Handoff goes to Jones. Handful of Bobcats stuffing them. Steven Jackson to the bottom of the pile before he gets about three. 
Well, now Miami spreads it out, and they try and just power the football in. You see nice blocking up the middle from the center, Meister. And then finally Jackson able to bring the running back down. But Corey Jones able to pick up a couple. Make it second down and three. One thing that we've talked about is you know, Miami not being able to run the ball, but they're still about even in attempts, passing attempts and rushing attempts so far. So you're right, Matt, they're not going to give it up at all trying to establish that ground game. Head to the air this time. Rattleball fires and finds Chris Givens in the end zone. The freshman from Chillicothe getting a touchdown reception, his second touchdown on the season. A guy that Ohio University recruited, a lot of Mac schools recruited, but he went to Miami because his mom graduated from there. His brother goes to school there, and his sister is an alum as well. well. He just breaks it off, runs a nice pattern, finds the space, and then nice hands right at the goal line to bring in the ball. Chris Givens, touchdown for the Red Hawks, puts Miami up 13-7. to He's a guy that's been very tough for this Miami team, and the extra point not exactly automatic for the Red Hawks. Parsegian will get out there and a little better on this one, and he puts it up and through. Red Hawks up 14 to seven. Bobcats get a chance to come back when we come back on the Ohio Bobcats Sports Network. The Bobcats have to try and come back once again in the Battle of the Bricks. Miami gets on the scoreboard to make it a 14-7 score. As Ohio is set to deep, uh, deep back to return this kick, and hopefully number five will get a steady diet and get the Bobcats back even in this game. Had a whole lot of trouble staying uh, away from the laundry in that drive. 11 play, 69 yard drive, six minutes. And the Red Hawks able to pick up 51 yards of that drive on penalty flags against the Ohio Bobcats. So that's been the story for Ohio this year. Can't avoid the penalty in that drive really Played a big difference. Garrett has it at the 10, spins, and gets about to the 23. It all ended with a Chris Givens three-yard touchdown reception from Daniel Rattlebaugh, who was shaken up a little bit, but not before he could come in and make this a 14-7 game. I think Frank Solich is probably telling his defense this Miami team is plenty good enough on their own. <laughs> <laughs> won the Mac East. They do not need your help on the penalty department. I'd imagine he might be using uh, a little more sterner tone if we can keep it at that. I think he, but yes. Yes, you, you actually uh, pointed out when we were in a break, he was over there talking to the entire Bobcat squad on the sideline, trying to keep them away from making these penalties. Theo Scott has gone the whole way for your Bobcats. He's out there again in the shotgun with McCray to his right. Will fake and Calvin with the lead block and Theo with a nice run. That'll move the chains, an 11-yard run for Theo Scott. Calvin McCray showing off some blocking ability there. And McCray doing a little bit of everything in his final game. That time takes the fake from Theo Scott and throws just a vicious block. You'll see Theo put it up there. That's a, that's a run all the way for uh, Theo Scott, but Calvin McCray just puts his head down and hits Chris Shula straight on, knocks him back. It's a first down for the Bobcats. And first down success, so important for Ohio, so important for Theo Scott to try and get into the flow of the offense. Moves the ball to the 34-yard line. Scott on the option. He's stuffed, doesn't get very far at all. Martin Channels coming up and making the hit. Part of this tough front four for the Miami Redhawks, he's just a sophomore, six foot 320 out of Xenia. Well, this is one way to stop the option right there. You don't let it get going, just reaches up and pulls Theo Scott down to the turf. And we talk about first down success for Ohio. When you put the Bobcats in second and 14 for the Miami defense, that's where they can really kind of pin their ears back and limit the things the Bobcats can do offensively. It's Tommy Stuck up front had a little trouble for the Bobcats. He's uh, been banged up a bit this year, David White played a handful in this game. Scott will step back, looks to run, has trouble again, goes down again. Travis Craven this time with the sack. And if second down and long is bad, third down and an acre is even worse. Well, Theo Scott has a nice arm and he can move the pocket around and throw the ball. Uh, he's still not Brett Favre. So you're not gonna see him throw, uh, you know, throw the ball 40, 45, 50 times a game. He's really rather be into the flow of the offense, giving the ball to Calvin, running the option, then throwing to the tight ends. And this really, really does limit what Ohio is going to be able to call. 
It'll be third down and 17, although Brett Favre and Theo Scott both wear green on occasion, so they do have that in common. Scott will have a chance to fire, or maybe not. He doesn't have the football either. It goes down, he gets it stripped. The ball goes down and the Red Hawks recover. Probably the worst thing that could have happened for Ohio in that point. Joe Coniglio, the leading sack man, strips it and I believe recovers it as well. Let's get a second look. Well, this time the Miami defense, you see Coniglio coming from the outside, knocking the ball free and the Bobcats very fortunate to be able to hop on that. David Shelby able to get the ball back in three plays in a row, the Bobcat offense going backwards. Jordan Stevens also in there that a defensive uh, Lineman for the Red Hawks. Usually it's trouble when you're set to punt the ball and your punter's not on the field. I'd imagine Frank Solich is <laughs> probably bringing that up to his players right about now. <laughs> they look back, Josh Abrams looked back and said there's nobody back here and I'm not a good kicker. So he's done just about everything in his career. Why not kick? We're going to need someone else back here to help out with this. And the Bobcats have to spend the time out. But that offensive drive for Ohio, a couple things come to mind. One, Calvin McRae did not get his hands on the football. The first one, a run for Theo Scott. And then when the Miami defense starts to make some penetration, causing some ruckus in that backfield, Theo Scott uh, basically two sacks and in the fumble there. So Ohio has to punt it back. Next Home men's basketball game, St. Bonaventure, Wednesday, December 5th. It's not too late to get your tickets. Ticket packages starting at just 35 bucks. Call the season ticket hotline and the ticket hotline, 1-800-575-CATS. Fourth and 28 punt is up and away. Matt Schulte is out there this time. Punt bounces at about the 45, rolls to the 44, and that's where we will down things. The Ohio Bobcats, a second straight third and out as they trail things 14 to 7. He was one of the greatest rushing quarterbacks in NCAA history and an Ohio Bobcat, Kareem Wilson. 96, he gets in there with a touchdown at Hawaii. And then 1997, a touchdown versus Western Michigan, part of a six game winning streak for the Cats. Kareem Wilson, one of the best running back or best runners here ever at Ohio and a guy that Calvin McCray is passing up a lot of his records. Kareem Wilson, one of the greatest rushing quarterbacks in NCAA history. He never beat Miami, Calvin McCray did and Calvin needs one more touchdown to tie Kareem Wilson here as the all time touchdown recipient at Ohio. First down play for Daniel Radabaugh's offense is up a bit too high for Chris Givens and making second down a big hit at the end of that play as well. Oh, Radabaugh put this ball a bit too high for Givens. He goes up and tries to haul it in and waiting for the big hit is Mitchell right there. No matter how about this stat for you, the comparison so far with both of these teams, Miami with 13 first downs in Ohio with just four so far. And Routeball has 129 yards passing, the Bobcats 31, so Miami up, up by seven, really dominating statistically. We got a second down and 10 play here. It'll be a handoff that doesn't get much again. Ohio's been able to stop a lot of the rushing game. Unfortunately, Miami's been able to convert things on third down quite a bit. TJ Lattimore with the carry, it's about a yard say a generous yard. Well, you're right, brings up third down and long and Miami has had success on third down, whether it be from the penalty or just making big completions, receivers making big grabs. But the Ohio defense right now, heading toward the five minute mark of the first half, they need to get off the field. They need to get their offense one more shot this half. And if nothing else, try and get into the half down 14 to seven, because you don't want Miami to keep this drive going and then put one more in the end zone right before the half. Third down and nine, Radabaugh back has plenty of time. Throws underneath. It looks like it will be short, but we see a flag come in at the end of the play. Let's wait for the call. Donovan Potter coming across to make the catch and we'll see another look at it. And the Bobcats brought no pressure that time. Dropped eight guys back, including Jameson Hartke. You see number 90 right there, and they're gonna call the face mask. He had his hand on the face mask. Face mask. 
Number 90 on the defense, five yards from the end of the run, first down. And that gives Miami the first down. I don't think they would have had it just with the play. It looked like they are going to be about fourth down and half a yard, maybe a full yard. But uh, Jamison Hartke that time did. You can see right there on the, uh, on the replay, had his hands up high, hold of the face mask, and the Red Hawks one more time. The penalty benefiting them in the way of a first down. And Ohio gets a first down, gives up a first down to Miami. They've got it at the Bobcats 40. Hand off to Jones, finally sees some room, but a big hit by Michael Mitchell. He comes up and hits Jones with a big shoulder. Michael Mitchell playing with a club today. Let's hear more about Michael Mitchell from sideline reporter Matt Barnes. Yeah, you can see Michael Mitchell wearing a hard cast, pretty much taking up his whole arm there. He broke that thumb about two months ago, and ever since then been wearing that cast. Now, you see it's not hampering his hitting ability now in terms of intercepting the ball, pretty much impossible. But again, when you're a safety, the hard hits are all that matters. Back to you guys. Mitchell with two tackles so far today. He's been in and out of the lineup a little bit, but the Cats certainly need him in there, and you saw us with the run support there. Stopped, could have been a long gainer. Hand off again, this one stopped up front. Couple of Bobcats there, Lee Renfro and Landon Cohen. A big play on second down and short, makes it third down now and four. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised Miami went back with the run on that one, because you see the first down run, they picked up six or seven yards, which is much better than what they've been averaging and really kind of opens up their offense. They can roll out, they can throw the short pass to, to Gibbons or one of the tight ends. At that time they go back and now once again the Bobcats have a chance to get off the field. The Red Hawks have such a commitment trying to stay balanced. They try and run as much as they pass. They'll throw on third and four. Radabaugh flings it up. Mark Parson giving chase and the last second he will knock it away. Eugene Harris had to come back and get that ball. Good play, might have scored it, but Mark Parson a nice job coming back to make the play. I think Harris probably thinking to himself, I should have been able to pull that one in. You see, once again, just a lot of pressure, blitzing from everywhere. You see Michael Brown come in, make the hit, and Parson at the last second turns around and able to get his hand up and knock the ball away. Fourth down, though, you have to think the Red Hawks for the 34 again with Routaball and his receivers will try some type of a timing route, maybe something a little shorter to pick up that first down. They're going to go for it on fourth and four. Miami 9 of 16 so far this year on fourth down conversions. Routabaugh will fire, gets it, and it's knocked away. That turns things over. Todd Koenig, the senior, a big play on fourth down, came across, and a nice defensive stop for the Bobcats. Well, it was a quick drop for Routabaugh, and Koenig able to come across from behind, not get called for the penalty, and make the play. Again, Renfro with the blitz, and Koenig, the senior, knows how to play that ball. You know, there's only a couple places. You bring that kind of pressure, only a few places the quarterback's going to be able to go. Good job, D! Ohio gets a stop, and that'll turn things over. Bring out the Bobcat offense once again. You see a flag down. On Miami. It's a sideline warning against the Red Hawks sideline, so the players were stepping a little bit too close to the field. The first one, when that happens, it's a warning. The second one is a penalty. Cats have the ball in their own 34. 3.49 left to play before the half, and they're down a touchdown. Theo Scott's gone the whole way. Play fake and look to throw. Does so, finds Taylor Price beyond the sticks, and that'll move the chains. Nice looking pass and catch by Theo Scott to Taylor Price in Ohio. Getting back into a little bit Better offensive play, good first down play. Well, play action pass, able to freeze the linebackers. Theo Scott that time gets plenty of protection. And Price runs a nice route, gets right to the first down marker. Theo Scott, five of eight for 41 yards and a touchdown. It's an 11 yard play there, play fake again. Scott will look to throw. Got Wakocha, far sideline, one on one coverage. Juggled up and down, but here comes the laundry. That was not turning around on the one-on-one -on -one coverage out there. Jeff Thompson, a cornerback against Cheeto Wakocha, and we're most assuredly going to see a pass interference call. And this is the difference between, you saw Mark Parson in the last play, getting his head turned around, so you're looking back at the ball, and you're going to see Miami right here, or you should say uh, Noah Kocha right there, trying to get the football, never really had the opportunity. Thompson never turned his head around, just put his arms up, and uh, started to play defense, and you can see never really made an effort to find the ball. And that's going to be a first down for Ohio. 
And one of the things that uh, offensive coordinator for the Cats, Tim Albin, had mentioned to us that this game will be won or lost by Ohio about the receivers being able to make plays against the cornerbacks for Miami. Theo Scott making some plays himself. He's five of eight for 41 yards. And one touchdown that was complete to Andrew Mooney. He's got the Cats at the 40 yard line. Moving the ball. Scott will option out. Has a lot of trouble and he's swallowed up. Miami had all over that uh, option run. Joey Hudson coming up, a solid middle linebacker. Well, Hudson again, taking the option away. You see Scott right down the line and Hudson just coming up and he blows the play up. Yeah, no no, no opportunity chance, yeah. for Theo Scott to complete that option. He wants one or two more steps, make somebody commit on the outside. You don't anticipate that linebacker be able to come up like that and make the play. Ohio a lot of penalties now, today. yeah, eight penalties, six penalties. This is a whole lot for a game, let alone a half. Second down and 15, a little more than three minutes left. Leo Scott dancing, dancing, dropping the football. Let's see who came up with it. Looks like Miami coming out of the pile with the football. Clayton Mullins, big play. Sometimes where you just got to be able to take a sack and go down. A huge play for the Miami defense. Mullins did it last week against the Akron Zips, and you see a whole host of Red Hawks coming in and forcing that ball free. Martin Channels looked like he knocked it away. And it looks like it was Mullins who picked it up. And uh, Frank Solich's team had kind of tilted the field. They were able to pick up a couple of first downs, one on the interference call against Miami, the other on the nice pass to Price. But that time again, uh, Calvin McRae, a series where he did not get his hands on the ball after that option play. 2.48 left to go in the half. Miami with two timeouts. The last three drives for the Bobcats, they had two three and outs. One was for negative 18 yards, and then they lost that fumble, so the offense has disappeared in the second quarter. Miami's only gotten one touchdown themselves. They'll come out in the shotgun with Radabaugh. Hitch, go up, and to no one. A little miscommunication, it looked like. Uh, for the Miami receivers and Daniel Rautabaugh. Let's try to get the ball to Chris Gibbons out on the outside and Gibbons went out and the pass went in. And uh, they had him isolated on Neil Jarrett and had a chance to make a big play. Miami, after the turnover, going for the big play, trying to put this game really away, make it 21-7. Tell the Bobcats you're gonna have to score a lot of points in the second half to stay in this thing, but Ohio's defense forces a second and 10. Jared will go out of the game, and Steven Jackson will come in for the Bobcat defense. They've got Thad Turner in there as the nickelback. Second down and 10 for Radabaugh on the Red Hawk offense. A handoff to Jones. Jackson coming up with the stuff, and then again, the Bobcat line playing strong, and again, the penalty flags come out. Now, I'd rather see the officials try and take control of the game, step in between the two guys without throwing the flag and throwing a meaningless flag against the, both teams, which doesn't do anything, and say, guys, get it together, because we're not going to, we're going to, we're going to throw it on one or the other. And you've got to expect, I mean, this is a rivalry game here, you know. There's going to be some football played out there. But uh, Daniel Radabaugh, 12 of 22 for 138 yards in the air. A rough second quarter for him. He does have a touchdown pass to Chris Givens that put things ahead for Miami. The run out looks to fire out and complete. Rogers slips a tackle and gets some room. Brings it inside the 15 yard line to the 14, a 21 yard reception. Well, all no. with the slip of the tackle. A little more than two minutes left to play in the first half. Ohio really got to be looking for a stop. And not going with a two touchdown deficit in halftime. Trips to the short, to the far side of the field, near side of your screen, goes the other way. It's complete. Armand Robinson gets it. Big hit, didn't matter. Nine yard gain. Red Hawks. When they've spread that field out, man. You know, they, they, he has a chance to, to pick them apart and all those short. Short, short little routes have been coming through parts and they're slipped on that one. Well, Robinson does take the big hit and hangs on to the football. And Miami, once again, marching inside the 10 yard line. Robinson, one of the young receivers, of many young receivers for this Red Hawk team. 
We go to the ground on this one. It's Corey Jones once again swallowed by the Bobcat defense. Landon Cohen, the senior, bottom of the pile. Minute 21 left. This will bring up, see what the spot is, maybe a, a short third down. Third down and one now for Ohio. Very crucial to see, see if they can make a stop like this because uh, the, the, the Bobcat defense, if they come up on this, Miami, their kicking game is not anywhere close to automatic. Big third down play, it's interesting to see if the Red Hawks keep it on the ground or they've been so successful with short passes. Two for two in the red zone today with touchdowns. We'll keep it on the ground. Big hit coming up by Steven Jackson. Let's see where they spot it, but I don't think they got yeah, it. He didn't really come close to it. They've really got it marked right on the line. He needed to get just about to the four yard line. So it's gonna bring up fourth down and about, well, I'm gonna call it about a half a yard. Yeah, it looks like they're gonna uh, probably kick the field goal here. It's a clock run down and, and call a timeout. Yeah. And as we mentioned, you know, field goals in, in any kicking, not anywhere close to automatic for Miami. They had Trevor Cook in there as a kicker for part of the season. He's only five of 10 from field goals. Nathan Parsegian, he's seven of 12 and 15 of 15 of extra points. This will be a little bit more than an extra point, but you know, nothing very automatic in, at all in their kicking game. It looks like the Red Hawks will do. Their second timeout. TV timeout. Fourteen to seven. We'll have the kick when we get back. The Ohio Bobcat Sports Network. The Ohio Bobcat Sports Network on GTN is brought to you by Universities, Dials Hearing Center, the Ohio University Alumni Association. For Bobcat Apparel, visit the online store at OhioAlumni.org. And by Basement Living Systems by Champion. Enjoy a first-class basement finish or theater room for this season's gaming experience. It'll be a 22-yard attempt for Nathan Parsegian here as the Red Hawks look to make this a 10-point lead just before halftime. Ohio down 14-7 in the Battle of the Bricks, a big rivalry game against Miami. Parsegian less than automatic this year. Snap the hold, the kick. It's up and it's good. Cats 17 to seven down at halftime. Frank Solich cannot be happy with what his team has done, Matt, especially defensively and especially on the penalty front. Well, the Bobcats had 71 penalty yards against their defense the last three drives, and the result is 17-7 lead for the Miami Redhawks. And hopefully uh, Frank Solich and the Cats can get things squared away at halftime. Second half is coming up. After this, 17-7 at the break. Box ahead. Like the Ohio University Bobcats, AEP Ohio works as a team. We do this so you can do this. in Ohio and so far in the first half it's been Miami's game Matt Shepard Ohio down 17 to 7 your thoughts overall in the first half well, I think it's what we expected from Miami they tried to keep running the football had some success later on in the first half six seven eight yard runs there but really Roundaball has been able to spread the ball around to so many different receivers his receivers are making plays once they catch the football Miami has also been able to keep drives alive on third down the Bobcat defense has not been able to get off the field sometimes because of penalties sometimes because of great plays by, by the uh, Miami receivers you know a couple of things that we've seen from this game so far as we take a look at some of the scores from around the MAC. We had a couple of finals on Friday, Bowling Green with a win. They've got the best record so far. Uh, Akron falling to Central Michigan. Central Michigan will take on Miami in the MAC championship game. Kent and Buffalo tied at 23 in the fourth, and Western Michigan on tap of Temple. Let's check in with Tom Bosco and get an update as to what's going on in and around Ohio University with this week's Ohio Update.
Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Ohio Update. I'm Tom Bosco. This may look like a pile of dirt to you, but this land on Ohio University's campus is where a paradigm shift is about to take place. Reaching across disciplines, students and faculty members are about to inspire each other here to make discoveries in medicine and engineering. The Ohio University community broke ground on a new facility called the Academic and Research Center. What makes this building so special? The ARC is only the second building on campus to be built primarily through private support. The only other privately funded building on campus is Cutler Hall, built nearly 200 years ago. Our intent in funding at Ohio University and especially in this research facility is to advance the research mission established by Dr. McDavis when he first came here. Students and faculty from the Russ College of Engineering and Technology and the Ohio University College of Osteopathic Medicine are already collaborating on many research projects, like finding cures for heart disease, diabetes, and cancer. But the idea of creating a building designed for collaboration has a lot of people excited, especially Ohio University President Roderick McDavis. In this facility, Classrooms are called studios, workspaces are called hangars, and corridors are called pathways. State-of-the-art laboratories will invite visitors to enjoy their journey of learning and discovery. This is a lot more than just bricks and mortar in a building. It's going to be a change agent for a lot of new teaching methods, uh, expanded research in this biotechnology area and hopefully more collaboration. One of the projects researchers are already collaborating on, the virtual haptic back, is helping medical students hone a key skill, the sense of touch. Teaching palpatory diagnosis, which is finding medical problems by touch, is very difficult. The uh, first year student sometimes does not believe her fingers. Our product is a way for her to practice and get immediate feedback from the expert in the machine. And after a while, she becomes more familiar and confident in her skills. The really challenging part of this is that the force feedback we're giving to people when, they're, when we're trying to mimic the sense of touch, all these calculations have to be done in a millisecond. We have one one thousandth of a second to calculate how the back is going to feel. This could not be done without this kind of collaboration. The engineers don't know the human body well enough to be able to simulate. The physicians don't know how to program things. It's coming together and find a common language that we can talk about this. And this is sometimes challenging. Uh, but we've been doing this now for about seven years. One of the many diabetes studies happening at Ohio University involves the use of a sensor that constantly monitors a patient's blood glucose levels. But the sensors give doctors a dizzying array of information. So I have. 800 patients with type 1 diabetes on a pump. My patients send me their blood sugars every three days, 270 values per day. So we're trying to help them by making some software that can help monitor, let them know when they're high or low, and make helpful suggestions of how to get back on track. But we also envision the software could reside in this device. And as the patient is going to do something, it could say, no. Nah, Remember the last time you did that, you went hypoglycemic? Do this to prevent that. I have no medical background, so I wouldn't understand what problems patients with diabetes face. But Dr. Schwartz, he can't follow them around 24 hours a day. I can program computers that can help keep his knowledge, what he would be saying if he were there, inside a computer that the patient can talk to whenever they want. All of this collaboration between the Russ College of Engineering and the College of Osteopathic Medicine has led to the creation of a new degree program here at Ohio University. Let's meet Anthony Schwartz, one of the first students enrolled in the Biomedical Engineering Graduate Program. So Anthony, tell me what it is you're working on. Working on a uh, new drug that we've been developing. I've been involved with it for the past three years. That is, uh, we first saw it in a thyroid cancer that was able to inhibit uh, thyroid cancer cell growth. And then um, we've expanded it to breast, prostate, melanoma, and uh, our main focus now is pancreatic cancer because um, it's one of the worst cancers you can get. Tell me about the biomedical engineering degree program that you're enrolled in. Actually, it's really cool because it's kind of like a new field. They have, I think, three different focuses, such as mechanical engineering. You have the uh, chemical engineering aspect, that is, that's where I'm working at, and we also have the uh, um, computer engineering side. So tell me what you want to do with the rest of your life when you earn your degree. Um, I'd like to uh, follow the drug through, um, into human clinical trials because actually seeing something I've worked on actually help benefit and save lives would be the greatest thing ever. 
Construction of the Academic Research Center starts January 2, 2008. Work should be completed fall quarter 2009. You can support the collaborative research and learning that will happen in the ARC. Go to ohio.edu slash give for more information. Thanks for joining us today. Until next time, check us out on the web at ohio.edu. For Ohio Update, I'm Tom Bosco. Bobcats trail the Red Hawks 17 to seven here at halftime. Football season closing down, basketball season just heating up. On Sylvia Crawley's women's team, one new face can be stepping onto the court for the first time this year, but she's no stranger to the bright lights. All right, we'll have a look at that story in just a little bit as we round things up here at halftime, 17 to seven. Ohio is trailing the Red Hawks, and as promised, we've got that story for you. So here's a look at Allie LaForce of the Ohio women's basketball team. The first runner up is Michigan. And so this team USA 2005 is Ohio. Ohio University women's basketball player Allie LaForce is not your stereotypical pageant winner. Growing up, I never really did pageants. I did a lot of sports. I was on an all-guys baseball team. My brother's only a year behind me, so everything he did, I did. And I just, I was into sports. My mom said, you want to mix it up a little bit? There's this thing called Miss Ohio Teen. So in high school, the freshman from Vermilion, Ohio, who lettered in basketball, softball, and track, traded her gym shoes for high heels. And with the help of her mom, Lisa, a Miss USA 1977, they approached pageantry like it was a basketball camp. Drills and training later, the next thing you know, she won Miss Teen Ohio and Miss Teen USA 2005. It was crazy. Uh, being the last one standing, the first thing that came to my mind was, how did I get this far? During high school, she traveled the globe as Miss Teen USA, but didn't let her crown keep her away from the court. She scheduled appearances around high school basketball season where she averaged 13 points and nearly four boards and four assists a game. And this fall, her journey led her to Ohio University to study journalism at the prestigious E.W. Scripps School of Journalism. But as always, playing hoops was not far from her mind. I knew I wouldn't be satisfied with myself if I didn't at least try to play basketball. Allie earned a spot as a walk-on on Coach Sylvia Crowley's team because, well, this Miss Teen USA can play. She moves extremely well without the basketball, and she is an excellent shooter. Outside of the game of basketball, Crowley has been able to teach LaForce a few things about the game of life in the public eye. You have to be able to um, just kind of switch things up, to go from very feminine, very ladylike, very dainty, to just aggressive, go in there, get the rebound, you know, not back down. That's why I admire Coach Crowley so much, is because she's a great mixture of the two a competitive athlete and a lady at the same time. Next stop for Allie may be from high heels to high tops to a microphone. After college ball, LaForce would like to stay in the public eye with a career as a sports broadcaster. And Sylvia Crowley's women's basketball team, a victory 86-55 today over Presbyterian College. And Allie LaForce gets her first career college point. We'll have the second half of the Bobcats and Red Hawks on a rivalry game coming up here in just a minute. Seventeen seven, the score at the half. The Red Hawks are on top of the Bobcats on senior day of a rivalry game in the Battle of the Bricks. Miami got things going first as they started off the scoring in this football game. They, Frank Solich's squad did their best to stop Miami from going on the ground. And that's how the first score happened. It was on the ground. It's Tim Merriweather, one yard touchdown run, and that put him up seven nothing. Cats came back. Tied it up at seven, Matt Shepard. And well, now we're at 17-7. Uh, look at some of those highlights. A deep pass by Daniel Raudabaugh. Got things down low, and Merriweather puts it in. And as I said, the Bobcats came back and tied it up at seven. Theo Scott and Calvin McCray teamed up to take the Bobcats right down the field. And then Theo Scott, this little two-yard dump off to Andrew Moody for a touchdown. It was 7-7. But after that, Miami starts to kind of assert themselves on offense and defense, forcing Theo Scott back and, and 
and then uh, round the ball really starts to take control. Found Chris Gibbons there for three yards out for a touchdown pass. A razzle dazzle, the Bobcat defense stuffed things a touch. It was 14 7, but just before the half, it was 17 7 on a Parsegian field goal. But the defense came up strong and stuffed things a bit for the Ohio Bobcats, or else the score would have been a little bit different. 17 7 is where we're at. Let's take a look at your halftime stats. Time of possession is the one thing that really jumps out at me, almost doubling then some. Well, look at the rushing yards too. Now Miami, of course, they know they're gonna get their yards through the air, but 29 rushing yards for the Red Hawks, then 25 for Ohio. Most of that goes to the fact that Theo Scott minus 29 yards. The Red Hawks have been right up in his face mask every time he's tried to drop back and uh, throw the football. And those 29 rushing yards on 21 carries by the Red Hawks. They threw the ball overall 24 times. Big thing, though, other than that was those penalty yards. Bobcats, eight penalties, 74 yards, several penalties, keeping drives alive for the Red Hawks. Miami flagged for 50 yards of penalty, so we've had almost 125 yards penalty, penalty uh, yards in the first half, and that is a lot. Yeah, six, six penalties for the Red Hawks for 50 yards. That's a, a game's worth for both teams, you, you would say. As, as the Bobcats run out on the field, they will get the ball first in the second half. and. Let's head down to Matt Barnes, who's standing by with head coach Frank Solich to talk about that second right, half, Matt. A lot of penalties in the first half. Just talk about team discipline in the second half. Well, it's obvious uh, we're playing physical football, but we're not playing smart football. And so we talked about that at, that at halftime. No matter what transpires in the second half, we've got to play under control. We've got to play smart f uh, football. If we stay with the physical part of this thing, we'll make some breaks and make it happen. All right, go look at the second half. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Matt. We will have the second half of that game coming up here next on the Ohio Bobcats Sports Network. Back here at Peden Stadium, Frank Solich's team will get the ball to start the second half, and they'll have some work that they need to do. Down 10 points to their rival, the Miami Red Hawks, here on Senior Day. Jason Coma alongside Matt Shepard. Matt Barnes down on the sidelines. And Matt, one thing the Bobcats did not really assert themselves to try and do was get Calvin McCray into the game a whole lot in the first half. Well, they did early on, and then they tried to let the pass open things up for uh, Calvin, problem was Miami's pass rush started putting Ohio in second and long, third and long situations, and those are not Calvin McCray downs. So now the Bobcats want to make sure that Calvin has the opportunity to get his hands on the football. Calvin McCray, five carries, 49 yards in the first half as we are underway in the second half. And Chris Garrett getting it, shaking it, baking it, comes back, and he has a little seam. Nice return by Chris Garrett. Brings it up to the 36-yard line. Good, pos good field position for the Bobcats as they start the second half. A 28-yard return for Garrett. Well, it doesn't take much for Chris Garrett to get going. You see one, two steps. He looks for a crease, and then he just finds it and cuts up. And really pretty nice job by Miami's kick return team here at the end to hold a few lanes and just make sure that there wasn't going to be any bounce to the outside. Credit has to go uh, to Jeff Thompson on that play. Did not give out the outside. We'll see Brad Bauer to start the second half, and he'll hand it to Calvin McCray on the... First down, carry Calvin to get a couple yards, and things are moving forward for the Ohio offense as they bring in, as they bring in Brad Bauer. But one thing we do want to mention was Calvin McCray. The record watch is on. That now ties him for the career rushing attempts mark at Ohio. One more rush, and he will surpass things on that mark. He now is 885, tied with Kareem Wilson. Maybe he'll get it here, and he does. The carry slips through, and more importantly, gets about three more yards. That's 886 career carries. Moves him into first in the record books. It also moves him fourth all time in the MAC list, which shows you what he's been able to do. We do have a flag on the play. Dead ball, personal foul. Number 22 on the defense. 15 yards from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Jordan Gafford getting flagged with a personal foul. The tag on the run, the run will count. Is it on the end of the run? But Cal McCray 
Certainly been a good running back, not only for Ohio, but fourth all time in rushing attempts in the Mid-American Conference. You see the run right there, and, and, and right there is uh, Gafford getting blocked by Chris Garrett, and then I guess Gafford must have got up and tried to push him back, but again, the officials throwing that flag there. Cal McCray there, you see the numbers, 886 ahead of Kareem Wilson, and Ohio has a first down on the 43. Bauer in at quarterback to start the second half, throws downfield, it's broken up. Broken up by Jeff Thompson. Had Cheeto Okocha maybe threw it a little bit late, but you know, one of the things that you, you don't want to see, it was one of our keys to the game, is, is those Brad Bauer moments where it's, you know, forcing things. He doesn't want to force the football. Gets a nice fake right there to Calvin McCray. The Bobcats able to seal it off. And uh, just a little help on the coverage on Noah Kocha right there. Thompson comes over, makes a nice play to break it up. Almost had the interception. Second down and 10 for the Cats. Brad Bauer in at quarterback. Shotgun with McCray out there, three wides. Bauer in trouble setting up a screen, finds McCray and he dropped it. Pretty good coverage by the Red Hawks as well, but certainly a, a ball that you think might have been able to get, get caught for, uh, for Ohio. That play took a long time to develop. You could see Brad Bauer wanted to do that right when the play started. McCray had a hard time breaking free. And then finally, Miami's defense just staying home. They know where Calvin McCray is on every play. He's not a guy that's going to go hide anywhere. And that time, McCray just couldn't get his other arm outstretched to try and catch that football. Third down and 10 now for the Bobcats. In its center, David White. And for Tommy Stock, who has been banged up a little bit throughout the season. Bauer with time, delivers. Finds a completion and diving for that's Taylor Price with the catch of a 13 yard pass and that will move the chains. Well, Price, the sophomore out of Hilliard, Darby High School, knows where the first down marker is. This time, Calvin McCray throws a nice Brock to give Bauer just enough time to throw the ball and Price able to go down and catch it so the Bobcats keep the drive alive. First half it was Miami having a lot of success on third down. Now this time it's the Bobcats on third down and long picking up the first down. Cray the single back, double tights for Bauer. Play fake to McCray, look back his way. Finds Carter slipping out, the big tight end's got room and he scampers down, stopped at the five yard line. Another good gain, a 25 yard pass for Brad Bauer to David Carter. And one of the things we, you know, this Ohio offense, I know it hasn't been the season that the Cats you know, would have liked, but these these tight ends have really been part of it. And this was just a nice, nicely designed play because Cal McCray is out in front. So the defender, Mullins, follows Cal McCray on the pass. There's no one then to cover Carter. So Bauer able to turn around quickly, flip that ball there. You can't wait too long on that play. Set up the first down. Carter, a transfer from Vanderbilt with the gainer. McCray with the carry. He'll grab a couple, move that down to the two yard line, gets about three. You know, this Ohio offense overall, too, Matt, has had. A, a pretty good season you know you look at last year's team and it was a great great season for the Ohio Bobcats great season for everyone but Ohio is now averaging 10 more points a game than they did last year 100 yards more in total offense than they did last year the results maybe not there overall in record but uh, the Bobcats more firepower at least second down carry falls short from McCray back to the line well now we have strength on strength Miami strong defensive front their linebacking core they got their ears pinned back. They want to stop Calvin McCray from tying that touchdown record, and more importantly, making this a 17-14 football game. Earlier in the game, we saw Theo Scott roll out. So now third down and two. Brad Bauer will probably have to look for the tight end here again or try and get Calvin McCray somehow on the perimeter to make a football play. Tight ends in Ohio's offense have been very, very, very successful so far this season. Andrew Mooney has eight touchdown catches. Bauer instead will run, cuts back, and he cut back into the end zone. Touchdown, Brad Bauer. Bobcats get back on the board as Bauer leads him down. Nice run. Always happy to see the senior come in. Seniors in, in senior day in a game that's uh, Last home game for them, and Bauer here with the run. True option right here. You see Calvin McCray's out in front. He's waiting for the pitch, and then Brad Bauer just saw a little bit of daylight, thought he could get it in there, put his head down, and was able to score the touchdown. Michael Bronstein, the extra point, up in and good. 17 to 14, the score. The Ohio Bobcats get on the board, thanks to Brad Bauer. More coming up. Ash and gas.
masses erupt and escape from deep below the surface. It often results in a touchdown. For those who have what it takes on the inside, Russell has what it takes on the outside. Ohio University's Cutler Hall. It represents a proud heritage and has been the university's only structure built primarily with private dollars until now. This fall, the Russ College of Engineering and Technology and the College of Osteopathic Medicine celebrated the latest private investment in Ohio University's future when they broke ground on the Academic and Research Center. A commitment to collaboration and innovation, a community to integrate research and learning, a place to forever change the face of Ohio University. Brad Bauer gets the Ohio Bobcats onto the scoreboard. The senior from Burr Ridge, Illinois, the transfer from Illinois, the two yard run into the end zone, 17 to 14. The score right now is the Red Hawks will be set to receive for the kickoff from Michael Bronstein. And once again, like you saw the Bobcats earlier, penalties hurting Miami on that drive. The big 15 yarder which set Ohio into Miami territory and then Brad Bauer able to complete that nine play, 63 yard drive in three minutes. Pretty good drive for the Ohio Bobcats as they got back on the scoreboard. We'll see if the defense can get it done. Kick from Bronstein inside the 10. That's Givens the return, he'll make it up to the 20. Ball is loose. That's Abrams ball hawking it into the end zone. We'll see if it stands, but they're calling it down. Boy, a moment of excitement there. If there's, there's a play to be made on special teams, it's Josh Abrams there. Well, the official's pretty quick to say that, uh, that Givens was down just inside the 20 yard line, about the 19. Now, we'll see if they'll take a look at this one or not. As you see, he's looking for something. He comes on the outside. Yeah, he's definitely down. Yeah, definitely down. Josh Abrams uh, grabbing it up and, and, and running it in, but it will not uh, not be for a touchdown. But Miami will have the possession. Ball on the 19-yard line. Slip screen underneath, and this will be a turnover. Taj Henley, the senior, coming up with the interception. A screen that just went behind him, the senior from Richmond, Virginia, Taj Henley, with the interception. Well, two athletic plays on this play. One, Jamison Hartke, two, Taj Henley. You'll see Hartke come in and tip the ball. I think he got his hand just on it, he sure did. Tips it, and then Henley makes an athletic play to make the interception. And what was a 17-7 game, and it looked like the Miami Red Hawks were starting to really put this game away. The Bobcats come out after halftime, the big drive, the big turnover. And now the Bobcats poised inside Miami's 20-yard line. Taj Henley, a guy who waited in the wings behind Matt Muncy, getting his chance this year. A leader, even when he wasn't in the lineup, makes a huge play for the Bobcats. They'll take over on the 19. Bauer with McCray in the eye. will pitch that way. McCray looking to throw. Instead, scampers back the other way. Hey, this will work too. Or at least for a couple yards. Looked like he had a chance there. And the Miami defense really staying home. Well-disciplined group. Jay Hood, the defensive coordinator, has his, uh, his unit ranked at the top of the MAC in every category, and it's not because they get fooled off. And you see Calvin McCray takes the pitch. It's a pass. He's looking deep, but nobody is open. So Calvin able to cut it back and pick up a couple of yards. That looked like he had a step there, but a nice job uh, to, to pull him down. Joe Coniglio staying home on the defensive end, staying home to get him there. Looked like Calvin did have a step. But he was going to get there, call it three of the game. He'll get it again. This time runs for the first down and then some. Calvin McCray, another long run, a seven-yard run for McCray. It will move the chains. And again, this is just Calvin right up the middle behind the offensive line of the Bobcats, able to not go down to that first carry and always following forward. Call a timeout to bring the chains in here to measure him. Calvin, 11 carries, 66 yards. 11 carries the key because he will be fresh in the second half. Mm -hmm. He didn't have 21, 22 carries for 66 yards. He's only carried the ball 11 times. First down by the length of the football and then some. Gonna put the Cats inside the 10 yard line, the spot right about the nine. 
what a difference, what a difference a little bit of momentum makes is quick touchdown by the Bobcats, an interception, they're knocking on the door to try and take the lead for this game. Both tight ends in the game, Carter and Mooney for the Bobcats, along with big Mitch Morcillo at fullback, so the Bobcats could go power or pass to a tight end here. Price, the lone wide receiver out there. Bauer will pass, steps back, flips up to that tight end and didn't have anything, so he threw it away. Which is a step in the maturing process for Brad Bauer. A lot of times he would try and force that maybe last year. You know, he saw right away nothing was going to be there that the Miami defensive backs had picked up Mooney cutting across the field. Brad Bauer says he's got two more plays to try and make something happen before they go to Michael Bronstein for a field goal, so try again. That My Miami defense, that Calvin McCray kind of gutted one up the middle on the middle. You know, that's a group that has not allowed much on the ground. And they're a group that's going to come up and find where Calvin is on every play. Shaw saw, so you saw a shot of Michael Bronstein, one of the best all time in Ohio in just one year. So is Calvin Cray. Nice run up the middle. Gets it right down to the one yard line. Super run by Calvin McCray. The Bobcats get a double team up front and then great blocking. For Ohio, it's uh, that was David White with the block, blocked two men on one play and really gave Calvin McCray the crease he needed. White's been a good utility player for Ohio up front in that line, plays both guard spots and is in its center for Tommy Stuck. Bauer to McCray to the end zone. Calvin McCray, a touchdown, puts the Ohio Bobcats up on the board, and it also gives Calvin McCray 49 career touchdowns. That ties him for first in Ohio Bobcat history. It also moves him up to tied for fourth on the all-time MAC list. Ladies and gentlemen, you are looking at one of the best ever to wear the green and white Calvin McCray. What a, what a great running back for the Bobcats he has been. Michael Bronstein, the point after, is up and good. And the Cats lead it 21 to 17. That was just power. Quick, yeah, quick start to the second half. On Calvin McCray's touchdown as the Cats up 21 to 17. Surprising? Get this, Diet Dew has all the intensity of regular Dew, <laughs> with none of the calories. I am one of 175 college students nationwide to earn an internship with Nike. I am the nation's college photographer of the year, and that earned me an internship with National Geographic. I am an engineer designing advanced antennas for GPS signals of the future. I'm a business major, and my student investment management group grew $1 million to $1.5 million in just two years. I am the promise. I am the promise. I am the promise of Ohio University. There's a look at Calvin McCray getting in the end zone, tying the record for touchdowns here at Ohio. And giving the Bobcats the lead just straight ahead. You see it 49 for Calvin, 49 for Kareem Wilson. Bobcats up 21-17, and he just lowered his shoulder at the one-yard line and said, there's nobody that's going to keep me out of the end zone on this one. Buckles in. The Bobcats go 19 yards for the, the go-ahead score. 
The second half has been very kind to the Ohio Bobcats. They got a score from Brad Bauer. Turnover by Taj Henley, another senior like Bauer. And then another senior, Calvin McCray, gets into the end zone here on Senior Day. Five plays, 19 yards, in less than two minutes, and has the Cats on top. The return comes across to Rogers, brings it back up. It's about a little bit more than 10 yards. Call it 11 on the return, and the Red Hawks will take over at the 26-yard line. Be interesting to see what uh, Miami tries to do offensively. You know, we've talked so much about them trying to establish the run. They're coming out with a young quarterback who's just thrown an interception on a poorly thrown ball. Well, I think they're going to stick to it. I mean, he still spread the ball around pretty well. And that last one, Jameson Hartke made a great play that deflected just a little bit uh, into Taj Henley's hands. I think you'll still see him spread it out. He's got confidence in his receivers, uh, and he's been able to put the ball on the money. As soon as I say that, they put the ball right on the ground. But I think you'll see them keep trying to run the ball a little bit. But yeah, this game is going to be a one for the Miami Redhawks if, if, if Rowdy Ball is able to put the ball and spread it around and take Miami down the field. Two yards on the carry from Jones. Corey Jones, one of several running backs, has not only played in the game for Miami as Jameson Harkey took him down with a nice stop right at the line, but has played all season for the Red Hawks. They've had three running backs go down to injury. Austin Sykes was scheduled to be the starter of this game, but he hurt his ankle again against Akron. Brown about a throw, fires underneath, and it hits Michael Brown. Michael Brown with the interception. There's a flag down, but I'm guessing that's going to be a face mask on the Red Hawks. A big interception for number 35. The Bobcats will take over, and all momentum still with the green and white. Now Michael Brown just had excellent, excellent coverage, and it all starts with a little bit of pressure. At the last minute, you see Jamison Hartke again getting his hands up and stepping right in front of Chris Givens, dropping deep into coverage it was the linebacker, Michael Brown, and we will have a, a face mask penalty there tacked on, too. Michael Brown with the interception. Chris Givens getting hurt on that play. You see him being carried off the field. That's a tough loss for the Red Hawks. The true freshman out of Chillicothe has been a tremendous player. After the interception, player. we have a personal foul, face mask, number 17 on the offensive team. 15 yards to the end of the run, first down. Tremendous player for the Red Hawks this season. It's a you just heard it's a 15-yard penalty. It's Michael Brown's second interception of the season. Guy who's got pretty good hands, converted to safety, finally finding his own in the linebacker spot. But Ohio knocking on the door again. The Bobcats able to get pressure out of that front four and be able to drop the linebackers back into coverage, creates the turnover. Bauer looks to throw, does so, fires out for Mooney, and he's got it. Brad Bauer, 17-yard touchdown strike to Andrew Mooney. That's Mooney's ninth touchdown reception of the season. That now puts him into first place for touchdown receptions in a single season here at Ohio. And more importantly, it puts the Bobcats up by a couple of scores. Let's take another look. Six minutes into this third quarter, the Bobcats have now scored 21 points. Mooney just gets open. He's able to get behind uh, number 22, Jordan Gafford. Just a nice thrown, nicely thrown ball from Brad Bauer. That's a touchdown. Talked to Tim Obel, the offensive coordinator for Ohio. They said they were going to tr try and challenge Gafford if they could. They challenged him all the way to six there. Michael Bronstein makes it seven, 28 to 17. Ohio leads things here on the Battle of the Bricks. More coming up after this. Bobcat oh, Sports Kirby, Network Kirby, gotcha, on GTN you. is brought to you by AEP, the Citizens Bank of Athens, State Farm Insurance, and by Inky Northwest Honda, where our values bring you in and our people bring you back. Welcome back to Peden Stadium, the Ohio Bobcats, 28-17 on top of the Red Hawks. Let's head down to the sidelines with Matt Barnes and a special guest. Yeah, I'm here with Ohio Athletic Director Kirby Hokett, and Kirby, been a great fall sports season already for the Bobcats, and not only doing great on the field, but great in the classroom. 83% graduate success rate. Just tell us a little bit more about that. 
Well, our academic success of our student athletes has always been a point of pride for Ohio athletics. And it's a testament to the former student athletes who have come through here and their focus on academic success, but also our coaching staff and our academic support unit and the emphasis that they place on there. And, and the ultimate goal as young people come into our program is graduation. And specifically, football, 77%, 10% better than the national average. That's, I mean, a great testament toward the football program, too. It is. Last year, our football program was one of only 31 recognized in the country for having a graduation success rate of over 70%. And on top of that, our men's basketball program had the highest graduation success rate in the Mid-American Conference. So our student athletes are succeeding in the classroom, and uh, that's a tremendous point of pride for us at Ohio. And just talk about this, the student athlete experience here, because obviously that's it's all about on the classroom and on the field, too. It is. Uh, at the end of the spring quarter last year, we had 311 student athletes with a 3.0 grade point average or higher. And we had 171 with a 3.5 or higher. So our young people are exceptionally talented and, and representing us exceptionally well in academics in the classroom, but also in athletic competition. All right, sure, it's good on the field right now. All right, back to you guys at the booth. All right, thank you, Matt Barnes. Ohio University is certainly a... Uh, a quality school academically as well and the athletes at Ohio University uh, doing well in the classroom the Bobcats doing well on the field 28-17 uh, on top of things the decent return by Rogers brings it to the 33 yard line of uh, Miami and that's where they will start things to take over well you asked me last time what are they gonna have to do and and now you have a quarterback without much of a running game behind him who uh, Rada ball is gonna have to try and really throw this football around and, and now bring the Red Hawks back. Hands it off to Merriweather, slips and gets through. Probably a touchdown save and tackle there by Steven Jackson. With a Red Hawk down, the 19 yard run for Merriweather. Andrew Mooney, you see a shot of him. He's now got nine touchdowns this season for Ohio. That's a season record. Andrew Mooney, a tight end, played for New Mexico State, transferred from there, came here to Ohio University, and has just been a great part of this Bobcat offense. Brad Bowers found him the ball quite often uh, in this season so far. This third quarter has really belonged to the Bobcats. You know, the, the Miami Redhawks have two turnovers. The Bobcats have 14 points off of those turnovers. And the last one, that's probably the best scoring drive you can have on that. One play, 17 yards, you hit your tight end for a touchdown to go up by 11. And, and again, the Bobcats came into that third quarter. They bring Brad, Brad Bauer in. They're down 17 to seven. Miami, you know, just starting to look more physical than Ohio at the end of the half. Uh, but the Bobcats able to find a few things that work. And now the Ohio Bobcats up by 11. See a shot of center Steve Meister down. And brought up to his feet. Steve Meister, a quality center. A guy that's a two-year starter, started at left guard. Loss, certainly, for the uh, Miami Redhawks as he goes out of the game. Frank Solich, his team, though, doing very well this third quarter. You know, they headed into this, headed into this drive, doing well and doing great so far. Frank Solich's teams have done very well against Miami, particularly last year. Let's take a look at last year's game. Brad Bauer, a guy who's got a TD run today, had one in 06. Calvin McCray, he's a guy who scored a lot of touchdowns, had one in 06 and has one today. Back to live action. Let's see Daniel Radabaugh hitch up, got coverage. Mark Parson. Nice job of getting on to uh, Eugene Harris. Incidental contact there, ball clearly overthrown. Well, as the game has progressed, you've seen Mark Parson really start to read that little hitch that uh, Rowdy Ball has been given. He, this time he didn't bite on it. The first time down the field when he did it, got burned for about a 17-yard play down to the one-yard line. But now Parson is kind of reading the tendencies. He sees when are they going to throw deep, when are they going to throw short. And he's able to, to maintain that position to put himself there ready to make the play. Second down and 10, just about eight minutes left to go here in the third. Heading into this drive, the Red Hawks have only had it for 45 seconds in the third quarter. That's after having it for 20 minutes of the 30 minutes in the first half. It'll be a handoff to Jones, finds some room inside, breaks it out. Posey and Steven Jackson finally knock him down after another long run. So they're gonna spot it at, uh, looks like. And by Steven Jackson. 25-yard line, so 
22-yard run for Corey Jones. All during the first half, Miami, you know, not much success on the ground, but here's where it starts to pay off, because if you're patient and you keep going back to it, eventually you're going to break a few, and they have to. They really need this to happen on the ground for them to give Routabaugh opportunities to make plays. You can't throw it every play, and the Miami Redhawks have to have that same success on the ground. Now, the Bobcats know, hey, they can run it. They can put it up there and gain 7, 8, 10, 15 yards if they have to. Run again, this time it's Radabaugh. He's tackled by Landon Cohen. Well, so important even more so for this Miami offense to take their defense off the field, move the chains, uh, and give their defense a bit of rest. The third quarter has belonged to the Ohio Bobcats. They're kind of shell-shocked. Yeah, very much so. Uh, two interceptions, you're pinned down deep twice. You're on the field for basically the first six minutes, and there's 21 points against you. Yeah, it's 28 to 7 the score right now, but just uh, eight minutes ago at halftime, it was Miami leading 17-7. Here the Red Hawks half thing, second down and seven ball at the 21 and a half. Shotgun handoff again, it's Jones again. Jackson with a tackle again, but not before he gets in for the wrong gain again. Pretty close to a first down for Corey Jones. Jones so far the leading Brown gainer for this Miami team. A rusher in double digits. Steve Jackson coming up to make the hit again. Jones with 13 carries and 51 yards. Take another look at this one on a measurement. But Ohio Bobcat defense has stepped up so so far, and they did very well in the second half. Steven Jackson is in there for Michael Mitchell. Very tough all season will be a first down. I told you about Michael Mitchell. He's a guy that uh, broke his thumb and is playing with a cast on his on his hand, but still out there today. And has played very strong despite being hurt for a few games this season. Landon Cohen, a senior, has been very strong for the Ohio defense. He's a guy that uh, you know, playing his last game at home for the Ohio Bobcats, but has a pretty bright future in football ahead of him. Still got uh, another quarter and a half to go here for the Bobcats as they look for a stop as the Red Hawks look to drive. Radabaugh under center. And it's Jones again. Caney coming up with the tackle. Man, it looks like Miami is actually is able to, you know, get, get some consistency on the ground. They've been moving the ball pretty well there despite not having much success in the first half. Well, what they're getting are getting big holes for Corey Jones right now. You see, he comes through, the blitz goes right past him, and there's nobody there. He doesn't get touched until Koenig takes him down at the six-yard line. So he's not breaking arm tackles at the point of attack. He's just running through gaping holes right now. As has been the, the way for most of the second half, or at least most of this drive, not quite so the second half. Gets the carry again. Hit by Harkey, by Jackson, and will get stopped just short of and so it will be enough to move the chains for a first down. Harris was down to two five-yard run this time. Coming off the two interceptions, this was so important for Miami's offense to be able to establish something, not to put it all on the quarterback's shoulders. And instead, Corey Jones taking the ball right down the field. It's the offensive line for the Miami Redhawks, creating some holes and really dominating the line of scrimmage right now in this drive. This drive, 65 yards on the ground for Miami. That's the whole drive. Haven't had any passing yards. They'll stick to the ground. And this time they'll get stopped. Steven Jackson coming up with a hit. And Noah Keller inside as well. Make it second down and three. A one yard loss for Jones. Thus far, he's been able to, to get some effort on the ground. You see Jackson come up and also get joined by Connor Riley and Keller, Noah Keller. Talk about uh, the seniors a lot. Noah Keller, a freshman, true freshman, playing a lot in the middle. He'll be a guy who's going to be a quality player for this Bobcat team. Second down and three from the three-yard line. Radabaugh to pass, fires up. Falling down was his receiver and no chance. Dustin Woods slipped on the play. Might have had a chance at it, but slipped. So far in the game, when Miami has been in the red zone, they've converted. They've got uh, two touchdowns and one field goal. Ohio looking to make that, if anything, just another field goal this time. Well, that time they tried a quick little play action pass and tried to find Dustin Woods in the corner, but just a little bit off timing, a little bit uh, slipped just a little bit trying to throw the football. So now it becomes third down and goal. Radabaugh back to the spread again. He's got Jones to him to his left. That's where the give will go, the cutback. 
Comes back again, he gets nothing. Huge stop for the Ohio defense. Landon Cohen, Steven Jackson, and down at the bottom of the pile, it's Noah Keller coming up with the stop. So a big stop for the Ohio defense, and Miami will do their best to try and kick. Well, Miami's running game got them right down the field, but in the end, the Bobcat defense able two times to stop the Red Hawks from really advancing the football into the end zone. The one pass came up short, and now Miami does have to go with the field goal. The Bobcats, I think, really came in thinking they could control Miami's running attack. So they have so far in the game, this drive might be the aberration, but they do so when it counts and have kept the Red Hawks out of the red zone, in the end zone, in the red zone. Parsegian will try the chip shot. It goes up and good, a 20-yarder also hit a 23-yarder. 28 to 20, the Ohio Bobcats and Frank Solich's team are on, on top of things against Miami in a very, very fierce rivalry game so far. Let's see how the Ohio offense responds to this. You know, that's really the, the only time that Miami's done anything defensively. O Ohio has certainly done things offensively in years gone by against this Miami Red Hawk team, particularly back in 1997. Joe Fondale gets two touchdowns, running old number 46, scored two as a sophomore fullback. Back in 1997, Fondale ran with the Ohio Bobcats from 96 to 99. Let's head down to Matt Barnes at the sideline for an update about Joe Fondale. All right, and Joe is here. And Joe, talk to us about that 1997 game. Two touchdowns, just a great overall game against Miami. Yeah, the uh, 1997 game was uh, it was an experience. Uh, I look back on that uh, pretty often. Um, it was good, fond memories. We were 8-1, and one, I believe, coming into the game, and it was a big rivalry game against Miami. That was my first start of uh, my career. And then what do you do with the team now, obviously still working within the team? Yeah, um, my function is uh, assistant strength conditioning coach, and so I work with all the athletes, uh, specifically the football team in the weight room, and speed development, any flexibility development, balance, coordination, speed, speed and agility stuff, and all that. All right, well, thank you very much. Great game. Let's see how the game ends up today. All right, thank you, Matt. Joe Fondale and Sonny Sano, a good, good reason why this Bobcat team is doing well. So is... The return by Josh Abrams, a long return. How are the Ohio Bobcats going to respond? How's that for a quick response to take the momentum back? A 62-yard return for Josh Abrams, a senior on the squad, somebody that, uh, you know, when having a chance to talk to Tim Alvin, he sat there and, and he told us that, you know, he's a running back coach as well. Josh Abrams just took it up the middle, but Josh and Calvin McRae got a little choked up, two guys that have been a big part of this program. Good well, that return. was just, just a great return. He didn't do anything fancy, just ran it right <laughs> up, found his lane, and he kept going. Think about the guys who have stepped up for Ohio today. Brad Bauer comes in second half. Taj Henley makes the big interception. Uh, Calvin McRae ties the, the scoring record. I mean, these are all seniors who are just really stepping up in their final game in Peden Stadium. Bauer to pass, looks for Wakocha a little bit far. Contact, but uh, incidental. You know, it's certainly great when a guy, when a guy who's a senior in his last go around, you know, here here at Peden Stadium, can, can get something done, make an impact, and it's certainly great to, to see stuff out there. You know, we, we had a chance to talk a little bit uh, before the game about you know Brad Bauer. I've had a chance, you know, to cover him a little bit uh, throughout his career back when he was in Illinois and even high school. He's a, he's a young man that has seen some adversity. You know, he's never been the clear cut starter any time he's been anywhere, but he's certainly a very good individual handled it with a lot of poise and a lot of a lot of you know being a, a good young man and, and and now he's been a good quarterback today as well give us mccray bounces outside gets the first down good run by calvin mccray when you see calvin mccray run and he gets that first step on somebody and it's one on one on the perimeter you just have a feeling that he's about to make a big play and here it is brad bauer Gets him the football. Now watch Calvin. This is all vision. Nothing there, nothing there on the outside. And you know there's just no chance that Robbie Wilson is going to bring down Calvin McCray on that one-on-one -on -one play. McCray's not going to allow it to happen. Feet keep moving. Great vision right there. Nice move. The stiff arm. First down for the Bobcats. 15-yard run for McCray. Moves the chains for Ohio. This probably won't be his last football either. Gets another carry. Cuts back again. Nice run, about a seven-yard gain from McCray. He's a guy that, uh, you know, maybe not the measurables of having a lot of speed, not a lot of size, but certainly somebody that can play at the next little level because all the stuff that you talked about, well, feet and eyes. Got great vision, and, and like 
you said, excellent feet. He's able to find the hole. He always falls forward, and he just does not give up that football. That thing's a treasure to him. He's fumbled three times this entire season. This is a guy who has carried the ball more than anybody in Ohio history. He does not put it on the ground. Run Calvin for Calvin. Sake, I, hope I don't just jinx him either. Yeah, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was worried. I saw, I saw him hold back there. <laughs> gets, gets another run and uh, picks up a couple of yards. That will put him over the... Uh, 100 yard rushing mark. He now has 21 career 100 plus rushing games and he continues to add to his name in the record book that continues to notch him up the list. It's his own record already. Well, those are the best kind of break, you know, <laughs> when, you, when you break your own record and somebody else doesn't do it. Third down and one, Ohio at the nine. 28 to 20 their lead, about three minutes left to play in the third. Give to Morcillo, the big fella. Move the chains. Mitch Morcillo, not one of those guys who gets handed the ball very often, but last year, and particularly some parts of this year, whenever he gets it, it's usually short yardage and he moves those chains. Six foot one, 253 pounds. He gets his opportunity on third and short. And Miami's defensive line not quite ready for it. Marcillo able to sneak through for a couple yards in the first down. And 2006 as a freshman, he had 20 carries. 12 of those were for first downs. He moves the chains for Ohio in this one. Bauer, option, pitch to McCray, swallowed up. Calvin's gonna lose a handful of yards. Bobcats are in the red zone where they've scored every time they've been there, four for four so far and four touchdowns, but that's a making up to do. We ran this into the short side of the, short side of the field, Marcillo out there, but one more time, making a big play is Clayton Mullins, just a great defensive player for the Miami Red Hawks and he breaks up the play, makes Bauer pitch the ball, and there's nowhere for Calvin McCray to go once he gets his hands on it. McCray finally stopped there by Jared Gaines and certainly has the bloodline to be a good football player. His father played in the NFL for the Bengals, Steelers, and the Bears. Brad Bauer, second and 12, looked to throw, has trouble, and he goes down. You see a flag as well, most likely holding. Joe Coniglio coming up with the sack. He leads this team and a team that leads the conference in sacks. We'll wait for the call, but most likely holding. Take a second look at it. Actually, Bauer was dropping back, Matt, and he just ran out of time. Actually, a face mask maybe there by Shelby. Coniglio coming across and making the hit. Holding, number 52 on the offense. Penalty is decline. third down. So maybe they didn't see the face mask then. We'll, we'll take that. But you know, certainly when there's a takedown with it, you're going to get the <laughs> you're gonna whole get something. thing. Yeah. Something is going to be called. <laughs> Ohio looking to call something that where they can convert or at least get a couple extra yardage. Let's take another look. See number 52 right right there. He's got his hands on the face mask. David Shelby. And Coniglio gets there anyway. You know, Shelby also a senior, although on senior day, I don't think he wants his name called quite like that. Oh, Bobcats on third and 20. Bauer to pass, lets it fly. Price in the end zone. Ball was picked off, but he went out of bounds with it. Uh, Robbie Wilson, the strong safety, came over. Taylor Price was sitting there, had time to bake a cake, and said, Brad, throw me the ball. Well, it just takes, takes a little bit too long to get the football out there, but Brad, this is the play beforehand you see him right there. The, the, uh, the hold that Miami declined. But now Michael Bronstein comes in to try and put the Bobcats up by 11 points. Bronstein with the attempt. This will be from 27 yards, so a 37-yard field goal attempt for Michael Bronstein. Kick is up and no good. And that's something we haven't seen Michael Bronstein do a whole lot this year. I mean, he's going into this has already tied the school on that has tied the school record for most field goals attempted in a season with 23 but before that he had only missed three field goals so he's now 19 of 23 and Michael Bronstein has a very strong percentage we'll get to that in a second but next GTN broadcast will be basketball men's basketball here on the Ohio Bobcat Sports Network Ohio versus these Red Hawks and hoops it'll come up January 12th Convocation Center here in Athens, here on the Ohio Bobcat Sports Network on GTN. That's your next broadcast. Miami will take over from there. Radabaugh fires far side, has Rodgers, slips a tackle, and Rodgers gets a couple extra. About a 14-yard gain for Rodgers. 
heading into today's contest, uh, Michael Bronstein all over the record books. Guy that uh, had the highest field goal percentage. Uh, this Radabaugh, is one there. Yeah. Radabaugh really put some zip on this football out there. They're down by eight points, the Red Hawks are, so they know a score, a two-point conversion as we get closer to the fourth quarter now with that miss could tie the football game. And route a ball with two interceptions in the third quarter. Now he's bouncing back. He really put some mustard on that football to complete. Hitches, fires again. Going deep and it's a bit long. Intended receiver on the play was Armand Robinson. And mostly, Matt, because I've been looking for this number for about the last seven minutes <laughs> uh, heading into this, uh, this game. Michael Bronstein was at 86.4% in career field goal attempts that put him atop the Ohio uh, Ohio record books. But a, a miss gives uh, Miami uh, the ball back. I'm sorry, I had to throw it in. <laughs> Glad you I did. Was, I, there was papers flying everywhere in the booth. <laughs> I wanted to get the number in. I'm, I'm sorry I hit you in the head with my notebook. Second and 10 for Radabaugh. <laughs> and an eye formation behind him. Hasn't been under center very often. Is and does and gives the handoff. Ball's on the ground after the play. Runner most likely down. It was uh, T.J. Lattimore getting the carry, one of three different running backs that he carries for Miami. Pickup of about four yards will move into a much more manageable third down situation. You know, I kind of thought this ball uh, popped out from Lattimore. It sure did. That ball was loose, uh, and that ball just sat there for a second or two, and nobody knew it was down there. And Miami fortunate to recover the football, setting up third down and seven. Dave DeFranco fell on the football, so it uh, was a fumble. Noah Keller with the strip. And it's third down and seven now for Radabaugh. He fires underneath with the reception, but swallowed up is Dustin Woods. Julian Posey, an outstanding play, following him all the way across the field to make the hit. A good play by the redshirt freshman. Well, once again, Ohio able to get a little bit of pressure on the quarterback, and that that forces them to throw maybe a little shallower than they wanted to, and no separation there. Posey able to, uh, really not much pressure at all. Just nice coverage right there by Julian Posey. Well, that is good coverage. That'll mean Miami will punt, but they will do so as we start the fourth. A third quarter that has belonged to the Ohio Bobcats. They put up 21 points and now lead things in the Battle of the Bricks. Frank Solich's squad at 28 to 20. Back here in Athens, Ohio, a shot of the Convocation Center on the campus of Ohio University here at Peden Stadium. It's the Ohio Bobcats on top of things, 28 to 20 in the rivalry game against Miami. We've got a fake punt. Jake Richardson, the fake, throws underneath, and that's a big gainer. Boy, on fourth down and five, nobody in the world was expecting that. Richardson throws it underneath, and it's a long gain for Miami. They move things along, and, and Matt, how about that? Nobody in the building was expecting that, so that's how you know it's a pretty good fake well, punt. Shane Montgomery, you get to time those things perfectly. First play of the fourth quarter, you've had a two or three minute lull with a television timeout, and they pick up 40 yards on the quick pass across uh, right up the middle, and nobody for the Bobcats around. And I think that Josh Abrams had a pretty good idea it was coming because he broke through clean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Usually when he does that, he's gonna block the kick, and there wasn't any kick to be yeah, blocked. Yeah, he, he was there. Robbie Wilson, the recipient of the pass, normally a strong safety. Put uh, Miami in a good position here as they move into Bobcats territory, move a little bit further with the Corey Jones run. Let's take a look at the third quarter stats and Ohio overall in time of possession still down, but in that third quarter, they did have the advantage in climbing back into it. And again, the Bobcats way behind in total yards. 280 yards for Miami, 164 for the Bobcats. But two turnovers in that uh, third quarter really spelled the difference for the Red Hawks and the Bobcats. And now Miami has 80 yards in penalties. Ohio still with 74. Two turnovers led to two Bobcat scores. Radabaugh fires. Gets a completion to move the chains. Dustin Woods, the redshirt sophomore out of Cincinnati. One of many receivers. Of the 18 different receivers on this roster, 10 of them have caught their first pass this year for Miami. It's a 13-yard gain as you take another look of Wood stepping in front to move the chains. And again, Roundabout just really throwing the ball in there uh, in the tight coverage. 
Still a one score game, an eight point lead for Ohio. Radabaugh under center. Give us to Jones, he bounces it outside, breaks a couple of tackles and ends up with about four yards. After seeing a lot of different running backs throughout part of the first half, it has been Corey Jones establishing himself here in the second half for Miami. Well, he's able to bounce it out this time and again almost break free before he's knocked down. Corey Jones with 19 carries now for 16, 69 yards. Daniel Radabaugh 17 for 32 and a buck 92 here in this game. He's got a second down and seven. Switches things around. Moves the production and Jones goes to the other side. Radabaugh rolls that way, fires. It's tipped and falls down. Nice play by Ohio to get the tip. Well, the Bobcats were able to get pressure from Hartkey again that time and that forces Radabaugh to try and get rid of the ball in a hurry and the Bobcats, uh, one of the Bobcats got their hands up on the football. See Hartke come from the outside. Looked like that Taj Henley. Riley on Ta the inside. Yeah, Taj Henley with the, with the tip. He already has a pick today, the senior from Richmond, Virginia. You know, we, you know we've seen that enough. Uh, I've said this enough, but it's always great when seniors do well on senior day. Big third down for the Ohio Bobcats. Third and seven, Radabaugh on the shotgun. Sets, fires, quick drop to absolutely nowhere. Julian Posey with blanket coverage. The pressure again. This time it was Landon Cohen with the pressure. No flags there as Posey was sort of face guarding the receiver, but a, a nice stop for Ohio. Well, one more time, a nice job by the Ohio defensive backs because when you bring that many people, there are only a few places they know Routerball is going to be able to go with the football. That time he tried to throw a quick hitch and it just, it just didn't have time to develop. Interesting now that Miami heads out for the field goal. Red Hawks, you see what they've done on third down. The Bobcat have done a good job in the second half, improving their numbers on third down, but it's a long attempt for Nathan Parsigi, and he puts it up, and he puts it good. A guy who doesn't have a whole lot of range, but does, does make it. And brings Miami back a little bit closer, but the Ohio Bobcats still lead things 28 to three. Or we come back on the Ohio Bobcat Sports Network. The Ohio Bobcat Sports Network on GTN is brought to you by Universities, Dials Hearing Center, the Ohio University Alumni Association. For Bobcat Apparel, visit the online store at ohioalumni.org. And by Basement Living Systems by Champion. Enjoy a first-class basement finish or theater room for this season's gaming experience. Welcome back to Peden Stadium. The Ohio Bobcats lead things after the Red Hawks. Field goal 28 to three. Let's head down to Matt Barnes on the sideline. Yeah, it's been a great, great season for Calvin McCran. I talked to him earlier in the week about all of it, and he's a very, very humble guy for all the accolades he's received. He told me he felt like he left a couple things out there in terms of his career, you know, not winning a MAC championship or being able to win a bowl game. But in the end, I asked him what he won at most out of this Miami game. He said, forget the records, all I wanted to win. True senior leadership coming out of number five. Back to you guys. Thank you, Matt. The Bobcats lead things 28 to 23, perhaps wishful thinking a second <laughs> ago when I only gave Miami three points. Great if they could take some away. But Calvin McCray, Matt Shepard, is a, a true uh, a, a true class act down there and a good football player for these Bobcats. He's been a leader for four years now, every time he steps on the football field. Kick is returned by Abrams. Boy, he's got some speed. Nice return, brings it up to about the 27-yard line. Miami's drive, 11 plays, 59 yards, but the most important stat up there is that it was held to the 38-yard field goal. Ohio's defense responded and held this lead as Nathan Parsegian knocked it in from 38 yards. 38's about his range too, he's good from about 40 in, so they were right there at the end of where they feel comfortable putting him out there. The key play on that drive again, the fake field goal for 40 yards that set up, uh, got them set up with the first down and then good enough for the field goal. Let's see what the Cats can do with it now on first and 10 from the 28. Bauer to McCray, 
Nice little stutter step to actually pick up some yards. He started that play off and looks like he was stuffed but comes up with four. And we saw this so often last year, the Bobcats in tight games down the stretch, able to go on a six, seven, eight minute drive and get a field goal or a touchdown to kind of put the game out of reach. It's exactly what Frank Silich wants right now. He's got his senior quarterback, his senior running back, Calvin McCray, the record holder, to get him the football and keep the chains moving down the field. Expect a steady diet of Calvin McCray here in the second half as the Cats have things after the five yard run. It's back to Calvin, a little miscommunication, but he gets back to the line. Bowen bumped him a little bit and came a little bit too tight with that. Just about disaster for the Bobcats. Yeah. So one thing Ohio certainly does not want here at all is any kind of turnover. As though you would ever actually want a turnover, but uh, certainly not here. If you had to pick your time, this would not be the time you'd Thank you for supporting me, that, that was good. <laughs> especially after uh, it took, a, took three plays to find a stat earlier. Big third down for the Cats, third and five. Bauer in the shotgun. Calvin McCray to the near side. Good time, fires up, a bit high and nearly picked off. Had Taylor Price threw it a bit high. Jared Gaines coming through and nearly intercepted it. Not what Ohio certainly would have wanted at all. Now they're gonna punt the football and give it back. Price uh, was able to get in front of the defender at the 40 yard line, would have been good for the first down. The ball just sailed a little bit high on Brad Bauer. Now the Bobcats again have to punt. The defense now has been on the field a lot in a row. And uh, so we have Miami taking a timeout. Yeah, so far Brad Bauer, he has been on the field to be able to uh, lead the, the Bobcats to uh, a handful of scores, but his numbers Three of nine for 55 yards and one touchdown pass, but the most important thing is the points on the board. They do get three scores in the second half. Sign up for the Ohio All Access on the official website of the Bobcats. It's ohiobobcats.com. Listen to Ohio sporting events and coaches shows live and gain access to exclusive videos, all for a low price of $7.95 a month. Sign up, log on to ohiobobcats.com and click all access and there's certainly a lot of material there. If you're a fan of the Bobcats, I certainly suggest you do that. Frank Solich's team set to punt on fourth and five. Miami took the timeout to regroup themselves. Matt Schulte sits back and snap, boots it up. Gets a good one, there won't be a return. Moving away was Eugene Harris. Let's take a little bit of a Miami bounce. Now it'll be interesting to see you know, how this defense for Ohio responds. You know, 11 play drive, had a let down a little bit on the, the fake punt. They come out and respond a little bit, turn things over with a three and out. Momentum could shift the other way. When you're getting down to that point where you, you, you can start to count possessions, the Bobcats, if they can get the ball back, they weren't able to get any first downs in this past possession, but get the ball back without Miami scoring. And once again, get a couple of first downs and milk the clock just a little bit, really put the pressure on Miami. But right now the Bobcat defense knows they're gonna have to stop the run. And that's what the Red Hawks do, they do run. Jones with a nice cut back and he's got room. Picks up 10 and then some past the 50. Corey Jones has been a lot of offense. It's almost been the tale of two halves. Ohio shuts down the run in the first half but doesn't have the ball much. Second half, they have, haven't been able to shut down the run but they have had the ball a little bit. Well, and again, Miami has a very talented offensive line. They stuck with the running game. They finally found their guy in Jones who's able to uh, you know, break a couple tackles, move to the outside, give them a little more on the, on the lateral running, not just up the middle. Jones with 20 carries and 87 yards on the bulk of the carries for Miami after we saw three different running backs there in the first half. Ball at the 50 for Daniel Radabaugh back in the shotgun, looks to throw. Dances, throws underneath, and it's complete. Boy, Tosh Henley was almost there. Coming up with it is Dustin Woods with the reception, though. Saw Henley diving across just a second too late. Well, Henley drops back into coverage, and, and uh, Quarterback Radabaugh really locked in this time, and you see just gets it in there. Henley two, three inches away from at least knocking the ball away. As it stands, though, it's a nine-yard reception, makes it second and one, and Radabaugh goes back under center. High formation, Jones back there, and he'll get the give. Stuffed, though, by the Bobcat defense. Michael Brown coming up, Lee Renfro there as well. 
And another senior, Brett Sykes, also involved in the tackle. Let's see where the spot comes, and it will be short for third down and one. Well, Brown has really played a nice football game. You'll see him crash right down there. Nice penetration from Sykes, and then Brown able to make sure he does not get close to that first down marker. Brings up third down and short again for Miami. Ball just short of the 40. First down line just short of the 41. Miami so far 5 of 12 on third down conversions. Routabaugh under center. Give goes to Jones, slips through, and he's got the first down and then some. The first point of contact was behind the line, but he slipped forward and had a chance to, to grab about four yards on the run to move the chains. Corey Jones has certainly provided a lot of offense for Miami. You see the run again. Well, he's able to pick a spot right there and just move it forward. The Bobcats not able to fill the, at the point of attack, and Miami picks up that first down. First and 10 for the Red Hawks. Nine minutes left to go in the ball game. Cats still up 28 to 23. Radabaugh back in the shotgun. Blitz coming. Radabaugh goes deep. Got Woods, but it's knocked away by Steven Jackson. Almost a super job by Jackson out there in the safety spot. You know, a guy that's stepping up and actually is playing because of Michael Mitchell being a bit hurt. Let's take another look at this, Matt. A nice job giving the help deep. Well, Posey not out on a corner by himself this time. Here comes Jackson over last minute, able to knock it down. Ooh. Pretty close, you're right, pretty close to being able to get his hands up and pull that interception in. Ohio brought the other safety that time, Todd Koenig. And Steven Jackson shifted over and did his job as well. It results in an incompletion and a near pick. Second down now and 10. Radabaugh back in the shotgun. Give, cut back to Jones. Stutters, he's got room. 13 yard gainer for Corey Jones. Another time where the Ohio defense made him change direction, but when that has happened, especially here in the second half, Picked up some yards. And again, that patience all through the first half. Miami bottled up, paying off now. Miami's offensive line strong here at the end of the game. And once again, Jones able to just stutter step a little bit, just find a little bit of a hole, move the ball forward. Jones now over the 100 yard mark. He's got 22 carries for 105 on this drive, three carries for 36 yards. Miami knocking on the door at the 23 to give again. And down this time he goes. Todd Caney coming up with a run support. The senior stops Corey Jones, a two yard loss on the play. And you know, again, it's almost the exact opposite of what we saw earlier in this ball game. Now, you want to stuff the run and get him into a passing situation. Caney coming up and wrapping him up. A lot of hats around the football for Ohio. Todd Caney, the Senior in this football team, playing his last game at home. He's got 11 tackles, two and a half tackles for loss, so a super day on senior day for Ohio. Second down and 11 for Miami. Routabaugh, four receivers, looks to fire, in trouble. Throws it away, a nice job of Ohio getting a little bit of pressure that time to get him out of his rhythm. No, I don't think they had to bring a blitz on that one either. The front four guys able to get off the blocks, get a pass rush off the field and enforce route about to throw the ball just a little bit early again. That's a tough throw to make across your body, throwing across the field like that. That brings up a third down and 11 now for Miami. Pretty crucial for Ohio. It's at a spot of the field for the Red Hawks at the 24 yard line or so. Certainly not a chip shot field goal, 41 from here. For Parsegi and as long as 42 on the season. First things first, stopping the Hawks on third down and 11. Pass, having trouble, finally fires, looks for Woods and just threw it away. Again, a super job by Ohio, bringing a little bit of pressure. You saw Jackson come forward, but the front four mainly bringing that pressure. And the fear for a defensive coordinator is when that first wave doesn't get there and the quarterback's able to buy a little more time. It's a long time for a defensive back to have to chase somebody around. Really, a lot of credit goes to the Ohio defensive backs. Posey out there, Jackson, uh, Parson, all able to, to corral their guys, not give them that space. We will see Miami at least line up for a field goal. This is, gonna, this is going to be a 41-yard attempt. Parsegian's long is 42 so far on the season. The kick is up. 
Oh, and it's good. Not even a doubt. Had a lot of leg and put it through, and he puts Miami down just by two as the Ohio Bobcats get the football back and look to add to their lead in this game. And really just blew that play up. Allowed some other guys to get in and make some plays. And when you're down by the goal line, they'll talk to the running back about this. They'll say, you can, it's not the time to hesitate and to dance around. You know, you saw Cal McCray earlier in the game really put his shoulder, his helmet down at the goal line and put it in. Now Miami backed up two more yards. And we'll see what they will do with it. Third down and three. Radabaugh to throw, fires it up, and it's too long. And a big stop for the Ohio Bobcats. Boy, that's huge. I look to the sideline, what will Shane Montgomery do now? Nine point ball game, just at that point in time where it's tough to decide if you're gonna have the opportunity to go the length of the field again and score a touchdown, but he's gonna roll the dice that Parsegian's fifth field goal is the right thing to take right now. Parsegian is heading out there, already has a career high four field goals. Something to remember in this situation, and I'm sure Ohio is uh, well versed in fakes at this point. Kyle Decker, the, the holder, is a backup Backup quarterback out of Granville is the holder uh, for Miami. Parsegian lines up. It's true, and he knocks it through. Three more points up on the board. The Ohio Bobcats hold serve a strong defensive stand. Keeps them still ahead in this game, 35-29. A dynamite football game we have here in Athens, Ohio. The Bobcats on top, 35 to 29. The Battle of the Bricks, a rivalry game here on the Ohio Bobcats Sports Network. We've just seen a flurry of exciting plays. Josh Abrams with a 93-yard kick return for a touchdown. Jamal Rogers brings it back with a 90-yard return of his own. But the Bobcat defense holds strong and holds the Red Hawks to three. Now as Frank Solich's team gets set to receive the kick, Matt Shepard, uh, what do you think the chances are this is going to go to Josh Abrams? Well, I tell you what, it's not, you can pick your poison down here. Exactly. Chris Garrett, Josh Abrams, both guys so explosive. I think you may see some type of squib uh, kick toward the middle of the field because Ohio has just been really strong on kickoff returns all night long. You see a sky kick and it'll go to Abrams. He'll pick it up at the 18. Boy, it's still a good return on a sky kick. Brings it up all the way to the 40-yard line. What Shane Montgomery did by taking that field goal is he extended the game. They go for it on fourth down. It's 35-26. They don't get it. He knows he has Calvin McCray to stop on the other end. Two first downs. There's no chance he has to score twice. Instead, he decides to take the field goal, kick it back to the Bobcats, 35-29 take their chances with a defense that is number one in the MAC, a defense that is averaging giving up about 15 and a half points per game. Today, the Bobcats have hit them for 35. Bobcats held strong, four plays, zero yards after that long 90-yard return. So a great job by the Ohio defense. The Ohio offense now takes the field. Bauer, the fake, the pass wide open as Wakocha steps, stays in, cuts it back, and picks up four more yards. Chito Wakocha, the senior as well, coming up with a big reception from Brad Bauer, and that moves the chains forward for Ohio. A 22-yard pass, Bauer to Wakocha. And boy, so much for coming out and being uh, conservative and giving it to Calvin. <laughs> well, the, the Ohio coach is showing a lot of confidence in the senior Brad Bauer right there. Uh, first down, you've got Cal McCray in the background, but they saw something where they thought they could get uh, Cheeto open in the uh, secondary, and it worked. Cheeto Wilcocha came into this program from Sacramento City College. Had a fine junior year. Had some whistles up front. It looked like Miami came across and made contact. Had a fine junior year and is having a good senior year as well. Let's wait to see the call. I'm pretty sure it's going to be offsides. Prior to snap, offsides on the defense, number 93, five-yard penalty. Remains first down. Big Martin channels at the nose tackle position was jumping forward. He's made a couple plays from up there. He's just a sophomore, part of this young front line for Miami. Channels coming across. Gives the Cats now a shorter uh, first down to work with, first and five. 
the 34 yard line. Bauer to Calvin. Calvin falls forward for a couple of yards. Most important thing is keep that clock moving. And Brad Bauer waited to the absolute last second to snap the football there. They lined up, they had 12, 13 seconds when everyone was set. Barked out a couple of signals and then gave the ball to Calvin McCray. And that's certainly something that you know, you'll get with a guy who has who's been around. We mentioned a little bit of what you know, Brad Bauer has done in his career. Helps to have that fellow back there, Calvin McCray as well. And Ohio now on second and four. 3.50 left to go in the game. Bauer, option, pitch to McCray, cut back. A little bit of space, nice run to the outside. Looks like he picked up the first down. Nice job by Calvin. Kind of sell it before he was going outside. No, well, he did, he tried to move inside and then he tried to stay in, stay in bounds at the end of the play and just couldn't do it. Got knocked out, but the important thing is first down, Bobcats have three more chances to move that clock. Nice pitch by Bauer, precisely as soon as the, the player game came there, made him commit, gets it out to Calvin. It's a little stutter step. Clayton Mullins finally pushes him out of bounds. Calvin McCray with uh, now 20 carries and 103 yards and a touchdown. A solid day for Ohio's all-time leading rusher. Back there behind Morcillo, first and 10 from the 29. Pitch goes to McCray, cuts back, doesn't have a whole lot there. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Timeout situation, Miami, two timeouts left. Ohio, three. They're not looking to use them right now. Not at all. Goes back to that the, the timeout Miami had to call earlier in the half when they were just getting things set. I believe it was uh, on a punt. Just it's a miscommunication and wanted to make sure things were fine. Obviously, you know, coming back to haunt them a little bit with just two timeouts left. Three minutes left to go here in the game. Bobcats up by six. The other thing you got to think about every yard they get even better for Michael Bronstein. Bauer to McCray. Up the middle, a couple more. Make it about third down and call it seven or eight. So Miami takes a timeout. We will stay here with things. Bobcats up six points. Less than three minutes left to play. Cal, Cal McCray. He's falling by, behind the big fella. Yeah, just man on man right here. Mitch Morcillo straight up the middle. And Calvin McCray right on his back, just trying to find a little bit of a seam to move the ball forward. Joey Hudson, the man at the point of attack for the Miami Redhawks. So from here, the Bobcats, uh, 27 yard line, you're about a 44 yard field goal from right there. To take a look around the Mid-American Conference today, had those couple of finals from Friday, and then Kent State falling in overtime to Buffalo, 30 to 23, Western Michigan on top of Temple. Also in the MAC today, one other game as well. As Ball State on top of Northern Illinois, 17-7 in the second quarter. One thing that we haven't talked a whole lot about for these Ohio Bobcats, you know, there is there is a chance if they get a victory today and, and should Northern Illinois beat Ball State that at six and six, there's an outside shot at a bowl game, but first thing's at hand. And that's his third and eight play. Give is to Calvin, dances. I think he's coming the football. Balls down to the ground, Miami's saying they have it. Let's see the signal. Uh, Chris Garrett just came out with the uh, football, so that should end that discussion. I guess that's uh, just as important as, as what happens. Let's take a second look at this and see what happens. Well, Calvin knows eight yards for the first down, and this game is, you know, pretty much on ice. He's fighting forward, and you'll see him right here at the end. Or you won't see it, but the ball does, uh, does there, pop yeah. out. So Miami's going to use another timeout. Uh, Calvin, at least from the looks of that replay, we did, didn't have exact picture of him, but you did see him scrambling back to look for the ball. You know, so he probably did, uh, probably did drop it. Let's take another look to at this and, and see, what, see if we can get a little cleaner look. The fake and McCray has it. Cuts forward right there. Yeah, ball certainly did. It just popped out. Well, from the looks of it, I think he fought back in that pile and took it back himself because he was the only green jersey to be seen. I know you said that uh, 
Chris Geary came out with it. But either way, the game now is on the leg of Michael Bronstein, Ohio up 35 to 29, just a one score game at this point. Michael Bronstein attempting what looks to be a, about a 40 yard field goal. Timeout here as the official looks to a little chattering and see what they're talking about. Which sure, I mean at this point, you know, if, if you're Shane Montgomery squad, you know, why not? I just don't know what you're gonna be able to see on that replay that shows you anything uh, that's gonna be able to overturn who recovered that football. Uh, the, the officials never made really a clear determination. It was a big scrum. Next thing you know, Chris Garrett was certainly the one holding the football. Um, I, don't, I don't know what they're going to be able to see. You know, that, uh, at this point, Michael Bronstein lining up for a 40-yard uh, field goal. His uh, field goal percentage in a career. Let's take a look here. So Calvin cuts through. Def ball definitely pops out right there. The ball is on the ground. Now, here's the thing. Garrett's way up here. <laughs> so if anybody gets it back, it's Calvin. There was another green jersey right in front of where David White is on that picture. Just Let's take a look here. I don't know if they're going to be able to see anything, the old indisputable evidence. If they do, it may come on this angle right here. Now, who has the football? Just can't tell. Let's see it again. That's where the ball pops out. It goes down. And it's right between Calvin's legs. Miami players at that point are signaling that they have it, but. I, I still don't think, as you said, though, that there's going to be anything that indisputably says that Miami has it. You know, from, from there, at least from that angle, what we're seeing, we've seen a couple different angles, and you know, it's a good job for, for everybody in the truck getting those up there, but you're not going to be able to see somebody with Miami directly having possession to overrule what happened on the field. So if we think that's the case, chances are this play's about to be overruled. <laughs> <laughs> At least let's take another look. Because our marks for accuracy have been uh, yeah, not, really high. Not the greatest so far today. Because uh, the that's, ball's out. Here's it out. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Fourth down. So there you have it. Certainly good news for the Ohio Bobcats as Michael Bronstein will trot back out there as the challenge for Miami does not stand. Bronstein, a career field goal percentage at this point of 82.6. Well, he's dead center in the field a little bit uh, to his right as he kicks it. 40 yard field goal for Michael Bronstein. is up and it's good Michael Bronstein a 40 yard field goal will put the Ohio Bobcats back out up on top by the all important extra score a nine point lead at this point and he had something to say about it after the kick too <laughs> so Bronstein just clutched though it wasn't uh, you know wasn't the prettiest kick it took a while to get there it wobbled back and forth but it gets over the crossbar and the Bobcats with a nine point lead now, thanks to the senior transfer from the University of Washington. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good. I'm sure Coach Scholich is uh, saying, well, you know, hey, you got it, but uh, let's take another look. Puts it up, puts it right through. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, they were uh, they were getting on Michael before the kick, and I think Coach Solich likes talking to him because he can look at him right, you know, right hey, in the eye. Those two have good talks. Uh, those are those are my two favorite people as part of the Ohio football <laughs> program is Frank Solich and Michael Bronstein because I am I am right uh, right at that level as well. Michael Bronstein is putting the Bobcats at a a level where it's now two scores in two minutes and 26 seconds that Miami will need to turn the tide in this ball game. How relieved is Calvin McRae? Oh, you gotta be thinking when that play was being reviewed. Yeah. Like, I hope they well, don't man. see anything up there that's gonna take that play and turn it around. 
Big day for the seniors, and we saw Brad Bauer on the sidelines. He came in at halftime. Ohio, at that point, was trailing 17-7. They put up 31 points here in the second half. Seven plays, 37 yards. A little less than three minutes ended in a 40-yard field goal. High kick from Bronstein. Goes the other way, and no chance, and swallowed up back there. The return man. Well, the Ohio defense four times in the second half. Miami was able to move the ball deep into Ohio territory. Four times they had to settle for field goals, including this last time where they had the ball at the three-yard line. You add that in with the two turnovers, the interception by Taj Henley, the interception by Michael Brown. The defense in the second half for Ohio has just been outstanding. Stafford Gatling getting some uh, congratulations on uh, making some hits out there. On the Kid return. Defense certainly has been very strong for Ohio in the second half. One more chance. Radabaugh fires up to Robinson. And he heard some footsteps from Michael Brown. That's a big win. Will be a big win for the Ohio football program if they can finish things out. We talked in the pregame. It had been since 1983 and 1984 84, yeah. since they had beaten Miami back to back. Hasn't happened in this building since 1999. Certainly some of the signs of success that you've seen from Frank Solich being on the sidelines of those Ohio Bobcats. Two minutes and 16 seconds away from making it happen today. Radimov throws underneath. It's a big hit coming across. Michael Brown supplying the hit. Woods with the reception. Now the Bobcats will give this pass up the rest of the game. Just a little crossing pattern across the middle. Woods now with six catches for 75 yards. Radabaugh, pitch, has trouble. Under pressure, and he goes down. And it's the senior, Brett Sykes, coming up with the sack. A guy that has done everything he's been asked for for this Ohio program. Used to be on the outside, moved to the inside, and comes up with a huge play here on senior day at Peden Stadium. Just got the pressure and got to the quarterback. They, at this point, the Ohio defensive line, they know Miami's A out of timeouts. They know they have to throw the football. They are just coming hard. Hangs on and throws him down. Second down and 17 play. Little screen underneath the Jones. Pick up almost what was lost. That'll make it third down and about 14. Posey with the stop. What a great job by this Bobcat defense. You even look back to the, the stop. Radabaugh fires again underneath the Jones. Get out of bounds. You look back to that stop after the kick return. A long kick return. Ball is on the three yard line. Miami punches that in. At this point, it's a much different football game. Yeah, Miami scores there. You're looking at 38 33. Miami still with an opportunity to score this one touchdown. One touchdown. To take the lead. Now it is two, still. Yeah. A minute to go is a two-score game. Still not over. Could be after this play, fourth yeah. down and six. Radabaugh on the shotgun, steps back, fires up, fine, looking for Robinson, it's tipped. And there it is. Steven Jackson and Julian Posey on the coverage, knocking the ball down. That'll turn it over on downs, and that'll about do it. 38-29, Ohio takes over of things with just a minute left to play. Daniel Radabaugh, the young man, talking talking to his head coach. Boy, when, you, when it's fourth down and about five, and you, pretty risky pass on that. Well, you need two scores. I think you know he's eventually he's got to throw the ball down the football field, but Posey just came up big again. Uh, the young cornerback has just played an outstanding game, and now you see guys like Josh Abrams and Calvin McRae come back out of the field. Brad Bauer, the quarterback, in the victory formation. The thing you have to understand is there aren't a whole lot of senior classes out there in recent memory that can say they beat Miami twice. You have to go all again for that senior class to say that four. all the way back to the 80s. Josh Abrams, a guy that uh, certainly helped out Ohio a lot this season, had a huge kick return in this game. Push Ohio into the lead that they have, and can't say enough about, you know, really, if you think about this, man, you and I have 
been around this program for a while about what Frank Solich has been able to do in his short time here. You know, a lot of people look at uh, you know, record six and six, especially having an up and down year. A very, very good ending to the season for Coach Solich's team. Outstanding last year, such a strong season all the way through. This win means a lot to this football program. 38 to 29, the Ohio Bobcats take the Miami Red Hawks in a rivalry game in the Battle of the Bricks. We'll recap and we come back here on the Ohio Bobcats Sports Network. I'm an astrophysics major and a Goldwater Scholar. Studying Senior day here at Peden Stadium and the Ohio Bobcats win 38 to 29 of the Miami Red Hawks. Matt Barnes is one of those seniors, Josh Abrams. Yeah, I'm here with Joshua Abrams. Had the big kickoff return, 93 yards. Josh, just tell me about that kickoff return. Well, you know, we've had, uh, you know, based on film, that we thought we feel that we can get a good, some good kick returns off. And uh, from the beginning of the game, you know, Chris had a nice big one. And I had a nice big one, so that last one we said, you know, let's switch it up, let's go the other way. Because we seen something that we knew that we could take advantage of. And, uh, you know, everybody fit they blocked well. All I had to do was run. What's this mean for you on senior day to beat Miami, you know, pretty convincingly. Snow about to fall here, just a perfect ending, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's a great ending. You know, me, Calvin, you know, Fitz, Todd, all the seniors, you know, we all had a great career here. And, you know, this is, this is one of the best moments we had, even better than last year when we had a, you know, MAC championship and bowl game. But this right here, you know, all the fellas that we, I grew up with for four years, you know, sad to come to an end, but you know, it's glad to end it this way. Specifically for you, I mean, you're behind Calvin your four years, but again, you came up big on special teams. Just how much does that mean for you? Well, I mean, it means big for me. I mean, I just want to show that I can do whatever you, whatever you feel like you can put me out. I feel like I can succeed at the, to the best of my ability, and uh, I'm glad I can show the coaches here for the three years that, that we've been together, and you know, hey, it's over with. So uh, you know, we're just gonna give each other our last hugs and. You're going to see us part ways, but we're still going to keep in contact with each other. I'm still going to keep in touch with the coaches and the younger guys. You know, I hope they succeed just as well as we did last year. And uh, Ohio's hungry. We're, we're going to stay hungry for a long time. Well, Josh, congratulations. Great season. Thank you, man. Let's take it back up to Jason. Mom uh, and Daddy. All right. Thank you, Matt Barnes. I think Calvin McRae is heading your way, so we may have a chance to, to hear from he, hear from Calvin here in just a second, but Matt Shepard up here in the booth with me. You know, enough can't be said about what, uh, you know, as the snow falls here in Athens and you know, what, what this program has been able to do the last couple of years. Uh, you know, two wins against Miami, so very big. And the, the impressive thing about this win was, truthfully, you look at it, the Bobcats, yes, we talked about everything they were playing for. It's a rivalry game, uh, trying to get to 500, beat Miami, all those things. The bottom line is Miami had a lot on the line, and they came into this game really needing this victory to solidify that bowl stance, and the Bobcats were able to pull it out. All right, let's send it back down to Matt Barnes with Calvin McCray. All right, we're here with Calvin now, and Calvin, talk about this game. I mean, big game beating Miami on your last game here. Uh, yeah, it was huge. You know, this was something I really wanted to happen, you know, play against your rival in your last game. And I think it was just a total team effort. We kept focused, and everybody played their hearts out tonight. Just to kind of recap your career. I mean, you've had a heck of a career, broken a ton of records. Just think about all that. What, what do you think about? I mean, right now it's overwhelming, you know, and I think it really won't hit me until I just, when I'm done and I sit back and just look at what I've done. But, you know me, I always got to give credit to the guys around me. They made my job so much easier. And they're just as much part of this as I am. And then four great years. I mean, you're coming all the way from Decatur, Georgia, your family all around you right now. Just what's this mean to you last um, night here in Athens? It's huge, man. You know, like I said, it was something I wished for. You know, I thank my family, friends, everybody who came out to support me. And, you know, it's just been wonderful, man. I'm going uh, to remember this for the rest of my life. Well, you truly have set the record books. Calvin McCray, thank great you. year. Let's take it back that. to you, Jason. All right, thank you, Matt Barnes. One of the best ever there to wear the green and white for the Ohio Bobcats. And a great win today for Ohio. A victory over Miami, 38 to 29. Big touchdown pass by Andrew Mooney, or from Andrew Mooney catches it from Brad Bauer. Josh Abrams, the kick return. Bobcats get a huge win on senior day. Don't forget the Ohio Bobcats Sports Network will be back for basketball season against these Red Hawks at the Convo January 12th. We want to thank everyone for the football broadcasts. Bobcats win 38 to 29 here on the Ohio Bobcats Sports Network.